some familiar faces around this LSU program. And of course, with LSU every season, you've got these uh, draft picks and guys moving on and got to fill the holes. But yeah, still uh, three weeks in, Jay Johnson said still learning a little bit about his team. That pitch is right down the middle for strike three call. Kling must have been sitting on something else. Took that fastball at 93 down the gut. Yeah, Sam Hall does establish that strike zone early, and maybe the book on him was once he gets the two strikes, you got to look for something soft. But Hall reverses course, pitches backwards, and gets Kling looking. Josh Pearson getting the star. He's had a couple of home runs this season in 27 at bats. Played in 55 games a year ago with the national champions. Won't soon forget his two run homer against Florida in game three of the College World Series finals. He's down in the count, nothing at two. Tell you what it must feel like the Tigers have been in Houston for about a week and a half. Remember That's they right. came in and played Rice on Wednesday night. Yeah, Jay Johnson said they got here Tuesday and a elongated stay here in Houston. Great base for LSU though. A lot of fans here locally and LSU recruits the Houston area really well. Huge crowd at Rice on Wednesday. Pearson pokes one out in the left center field. That's dropping for a base hit. One out single. Sets the table for their RBI guy Tommy White. Yeah, White getting moved to the three hole, batted in the in the second hole yesterday. It's an opportunity for Jay Johnson to put Tommy White at third slot, maybe give him a chance for some more RBI opportunities. That's all he's done in his career. Drive in runs. That is a mile high fly ball to right field. Galloway looking up into the roof will make the catch. And I think Texas State happy to see Tommy White set down on one pitch. A guy who last year drove in 105 runs. Yeah, one of the more talented college baseball players you'll see. Of course, with the nickname Tommy Tanks with the balls he hits out of the ballpark, but this one stays in. Sam Hall only needed one pitch to retire him. and. That might be the book on Hall. Try to get to his fastball early. Hey Brady. Brady Neal hits one right into the shift to the second baseman Mora back on the outfield grass. Neal's retired. The Tigers strand a runner. One scoreless inning in the books between the Cats and the Tigers. So is that purple hair with a gold accent or is it gold hair with a uh, purple <laughs> accessorized left sided look. I'm saying a little more purple there. Okay, I think yeah. so too. Yeah, maybe the angle we have but. Yeah, they are uh, donning the outfits today. 
I'd say so. On the LSU side. Not as big a crowd as we had the first two days. Still pretty healthy here on this Sunday afternoon. Thatcher Hurd back out to the mound in the second. Galloway, Lugo, and Powell, six, seven, and eight, do up for the Bobcats. Little cue shot dribbled towards Milam at second. He's going to surround that baseball and retire Galloway to begin the inning. You know, it's interesting with Texas State that Coach Strout told us that the one thing he wanted to see his team do this weekend is just get off to a better start. They yeah. were playing from behind a lot. And I would say yesterday when they got out to that 6 nothing lead, it was just what they wanted. Now, they would lose that lead. Well, Jay Johnson's coming out to say something to uh, – Played umpire Eric Gaucher. Any idea what that might be about? No, it was a pretty quick conversation, but what happened there? Well, you're right. It's going back to what uh, Kendall Rogers said about this Bobcat team right now. They uh, really struggle with starting pitching. That's been their Achilles heel. Of course, the offense has been high powered. Pretty decent bullpen work, but you yeah, need better starts. Well, this is yesterday's hero, Aaron Lugo. The ninth inning laser beam home run to the Crawford boxes. Put Texas State in front, 11-10. They would win by that score, his fourth home run. Probably the biggest baseball moment of his young life. And it was all over social media. Saw him being interviewed by 11.7, and he's still blowing bubbles. <laughs> well, if that's the M.O., I would say keep doing it. That's it's his working. thing. Yeah. Pitch from third is a strike. Slider on that outside corner. In that situation with uh, Texas State down by a run against Texas, and it just tells you the level of relaxation that Lugo had walking up, <laughs> I mean, blowing I think a that's bubble. That's exactly right. Just super relaxed and got a breaking ball that he spanks to center, but back is Kling. He'll make the catch, and Lugo's retired. Two gone. In the Texas State second. You're not too tense, I guess, if you're up there blowing bubbles to that degree. Yeah. Super loose, and that uh, that swing was loose. Davis Powell, the shortstop, next man in. Lufkin, Texas native. Two hits and nine at bats this weekend. We'll hear from Coach Trout. Jay Johnson a little bit later on down from the dugout game eight of our Astros Foundation College Classic another fly ball right center cling back going to call off Brown and make the catch so the Bobcats go in order in the second quick inning from Thatcher her still 0 0 bottom of the second from Minuteman.
Tigers and Bobcats as we advance into the bottom of the second inning. Hayden Travinsky is going to lead off. We featured him in the open. He's homer this weekend. Some Cougar fans waiting for the nightcap. They're here early. Travinsky has already graduated. Shreveport area native. Ten homers last year. First pitch swinging. Pops one up behind the plate. Paul, you're looking for room, but it's across the screen into the uh, lower seats. He's pretty excited to get that baseball. No, he didn't catch it cleanly, but he picked right. it up, but he's still happy. <laughs> didn't spill the drink. That was the key there. It's going to be interesting for LSU what they do with this catching situation because they have an abundance of riches when it comes to catchers. Jay said the best trio of catchers in the country called it a luxury. I would say Arkansas is trying to figure out how to juggle four. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's, that's a lot when you're only playing four or five times a week. That is. You've got the, uh, the veteran Milazzo. You've got, uh, obviously, Travinsky off to a great start offensively. Sophomore Brady Neal. Two homers the other day in that game at Rice. Yeah. It's a great problem to have. Neal gives LSU that left-handed hitting option as well. Three infielders on the left side of the diamond doesn't matter as Travinsky takes strike three from Sam Hall gets a second strikeout. You know, Hall set Travinsky up nice and kind of worked the outside part of the plate, tried to pop his eye level up a little bit on that fourth pitch and then comes back and just paints the inside corner. Eric Gaucher with the ring up. Steven Milam, the second baseman, next man in. He's off to a 364 start with the batting average. He dropped a comp on me, did uh, Jay Johnson, as far as comparing him to a guy that played at Arkansas a few years ago named Robert Moore. Similar in stature, yeah. kind of a dynamo, electrifying type player. Yeah, built pretty similarly of, uh, of Moore and same style of play, but. I think what separated more from a lot of second base, but just a leadership piece of what he brought to the team as well. Well, that one smoked to center, and Farber tracked it down. So Milam torched that ball off his bat, but uh, doesn't get anything to show for it. And a nice break on the ball by Ryan Farber, and that's a converted infielder. Did not play much outfield in his career up until this year. Just made the move in the fall. Not a, had, had a lot of game reps out in center, but made that one look easy. Two gone for Jared Jones. How would you like to have this guy batting seventh in your lineup? <laughs> yeah, right. He'd be a. Uh, there's the shift on Jones. Count the umpire. There's four people on the left side <laughs> right. of the diamond. <laughs> Almost mistook that for the rover. I'm like, wow, where'd that guy right. come from? So there's Jones's numbers this year. Last year, 14 homers, 45 RBIs. He's batting seventh. Yeah, be a cleanup hitter in most college lineups. I think so. And the pitch from Hall. This is a little bit in to send the count to three and zero. Oh. Yeah, the the hitting from Jones never been an issue. I mean, he's always hit. Question was uh, in first base replacing Trey Morgan. How would he respond in terms of improving his defensive skills? And Jay Johnson said he's made some big strides in first base for us. Just like to see that progression for these guys. You just keep getting better overall. Helps the team, also helps your draft stock, so to speak. Jake Brown, sulfur Louisiana freshman, in there from the left side and takes strike one. For the most part, Sam Hall has been down in the zone and so what he has to do to attack this LSU lineup. Kind of mix his pitches well, establish the off speed, which he's done, but 
Keeping those fastballs down in the zone is going to be key to keeping these Tigers inside the ballpark today. And you see the Bobcat catcher Ian Collier make a nice stop, but does a good job of setting up low as well. well he's got that big watch on the pitchcom device. Again, that looks like an iPad on his wrist. Brown ball punched to the left side. Powell can't come up with it. Everybody's safe. Yeah, should go down as an E6, even though about five, six steps to Powell's right. Try to backhand that ball and look like just whiffed on it, hit his shoe, and his foot stopped it from going into the outfield. I think he would have had the force out at second base with Jones running had he made, been able to come up with it. Yeah, foot save. I believe they gave him a base hit. Wow. I think that's the case. So it brings up Michael Braswell the third, the shortstop. Spent a couple of years at South Carolina, Georgia native. All SEC freshman team two seasons ago. Former perfect game All American. Pitches outside low from Sam Hall. You know, one of those tall shortstops. Ground ball to the left side again three infielders there Powell perfectly placed he'll retire his counterpart Braswell and the Tigers strand a pair in the second no runs on the board as we go to the third. We go to the third inning at Minute Maid. Zeros up on the scoreboard. Jay Johnson, the LSU head coach, joining us. Jay, you've been in Houston for a while. Is there anything you've learned this week about your team that either reaffirms what you already knew or maybe something that uh, you're kind of discovering with a few more games? Yeah, I think what we want to do is win every game that we play and then figure out what our best baseball is and our best team as we're going along. And we certainly doing that. I think uh, this time of the year, you know you're always going to be under construction. Uh, liked how we've obviously pitched at the front end of games. I liked how we played defense. Uh, offense has been some good, some need to get better at. Jay, this is Pat Combs. Great to have you along. And uh, Thatcher Hurd kind of started off with a couple of okay starts, but looks like he's locked in today. What is he doing different today? Well, you know, I mean, he won the national championship game last year. Uh, I think he gave up uh, a total of three runs to the number one and number two teams in the country in the College World Series over 12 innings last year. So. It's literally about strikes. It's about execution. And uh, he puts a lot of time into his craft. I trust him a lot. Jay, before we let you go, have you heard from Alex Bregman this week? Did he wish you well coming here to his uh, home ballpark? I have not, uh, but that's that's okay because he's, uh, <laughs> to the delight of Astros fans, locked in on his job, which is exactly what he should be doing. Yep, yep, there you go, Jay. One more question for you. So, you know, a lot of turnover in the lineup this year, but the expectations don't change at LSU. How do you manage those expectations with these players every year? Yeah, just make sure they know the ones that are important, and that's we want to be undefeated in how we prepare to play, and we want to be undefeated in our commitment to executing our job. Uh, baseball is hard, so you're not going to be perfect all the time, and then having the mental toughness 
to withstand that. So we don't really get caught up in the, the outside thing or certainly try not to. Hey, Jay, appreciate the time. All right, guys, thank you. Indeed. I feel like we could go on for quite some time, but he's got a job to do. We got to let him go. He does. Yep. Always generous with his time is Jay Johnson and a great spokesperson for LSU. Ian Collier sends one towards the Crawford boxes. Just missed a home run. Now Pearson has a chance for an outfield assist to throw to second base. Just a little bit offline. And Collier has to hustle in with the double. Just missing a home run. Yeah, that was a missile off the bat of Collier. And you're exactly right, Brett. That ball hit top just below the line in the Crawford box. Top of the wall there. And Pat, you'll notice if it hits the scoreboard, it might give you a strange bounce. That hit near the top where you can get that one true carom, and then there's a great opportunity to throw at a guy trying to get to second base. Yeah. That throw is just a little bit offline. Nicely played off the wall by Pearson, but the throw was offline. Ian Collier, pretty athletic catcher, got around first base well, and head first dive at a second base, lead off base runner and run in scoring position for the Bob Bobcats. And back to the top of the lineup for Ryan Farber. Struck out his only time in. You think about Jay Johnson, though, Pat, and just to kind of follow up on our conversation. Listen, there's a lot of tradition and history at LSU. No one's going to feel sorry for them if they lose a game and probably quite frankly a lot of people not Tiger fans are rooting against them because they've had so much success. There's always challenges every year. You lose a skeins you lose a cruise and that doesn't even factor in a Beloso and a do guys and you could go down the line talented oh, yeah. college baseball players. This year they have their third pitching coach in three years and the two previous pitching coaches are now head coaches saw Jason Kelly a week ago he's at uh, Washington. Wes Johnson of course the head man at Georgia so that's a lot yeah. of change for these pitchers. Yeah no doubt and it's uh, Nate Yeski coming in and Nate of course great reputation in college baseball one of the better pitching coaches you'll see as he makes his way out right on cue to talk to his starter Thatcher Hurd. Yeah. We set that up so he could come he out did. and perfectly maybe, done. Uh, allow us to continue to talk about Nate Yeski and I know Jay was excited to bring him in but you, know, you kind of put yourself in these pitchers shoes. You know, every pitching coach might emphasize something different, have a different way of communicating with you as an individual, and you get comfortable with one guy, and then he gets a great opportunity, and you start over again. Yeah. Yeah, I think for the players, the biggest challenge is, you know, you, you get a new coach, you're trying to prove yourself to that coach, and so they, this pitching staff for LSU is having, you know, probably thought process is, i got to prove myself up. Now with the third coach this year, if you've been in the program for a while, but, uh, you yeah, know, the benefit, though, is that it, sometimes you'll get new eyes and new ideas and, you know, new ways of doing things. And so Nate Yeski certainly brings a ton of experience, 18 years in college coaching as a pitching coach. And this guy's been to quite a few World Series. Went to three with Oregon State, one with Arizona, one with A&M. Yeah, he's a winner. Nothing into the Farber. And that pitch just misses. I, I like how you think about that because I was kind of the glass half empty guy saying, you know, new pitching coach and you got to learn maybe their way of teaching and, and you're looking at the uh, positive aspect because maybe there's a way of them communicating with you that's different. Maybe there's something that goes off as far as a light bulb that they see in your potential your stuff. Farber pokes one to left Pearson over to make the grab and that's a big first out because it keeps Collier at second at uh, second base. Yeah, good metal off the bat of Ryan Farber. Tried to dump it in there in front of Pearson, but Pearson was well placed. Kind of had him played up straight up after that line and made the catch. Keeps Collier at second, but yeah, Brett, going back to, uh, you know, I, I learned something new from every coach that I had, and I think it was, it was helpful to be receptive to that, but it was also coaches that have a new eye on you. They can maybe spot some things maybe the other guy didn't, and so I always tried to go into that uh, relationship with, hey, what can he teach me? It's a good thought process as Patino takes a strike. You know, we're in Minute Maid Park, and the one thing this organization, the Houston Astros, have done when they have acquired pitchers in recent years is it's amazing how those pitchers have taken a jump forward. And sometimes it's about looking at the numbers and the analytics. What does this pitcher do well that maybe he hasn't done enough of at a previous stop? How can we accelerate his positives and get him to be a different tier of pitcher or different caliber of pitcher. And I got to believe it's probably the same thing in some of these big college programs too. Yeah no doubt. No doubt about it. And you know some coaches uh, 
you know, more old school of style. They kind of coach from the gut. They, they see things and they're able to kind of talk you through it. Other coaches use the, the, you know, the technology today. It's, uh, it's incredible, some of these pitching labs. I think LSU was one of the first schools to introduce the, the pitching lab. And, you know, you get all kinds of data from that. Looking at, as we take a look at Jay Johnson, the head man for LSU. You know, the data comes in terms of spin rates, the ball leaving your hand, your arm angle. There's just a lot that goes into, you know, improving uh, pitching these days. You don't throw a bullpen in the actual bullpen. You throw it in the pitching lab because you've got all the monitors and the computers and you can turn around and get immediate feedback. You can track whatever metric number that you're looking for. And really spend some time interacting with your pitching coaches who digest this. Yep. The 2-2 is hooked on the ground softly to Jones. He'll take it himself, waving off her. That is the second out as Collier goes to third base. Remember me meeting with Tim Corbin? This is probably, gosh, at least seven or eight years ago when he took me into the Vanderbilt pitching lab and you know, he was so excited to show off the technology. And he said, yeah, we've got this machine that measures spin rate. We've got this machine that sees your arm <laughs> angle. We've like, we got this Rapsodo thing that you know takes all the data in. I'm like going, man, this is like you need a degree for this stuff. And that's where these pitching coaches and their assistants, uh, the extra assistant analytics guys can be so valuable. Chase Mora just hits bullets. This one, though, traveling to Kling, who will make the catch to end the inning. So a leadoff double for the Bobcats against Thatcher Hurd, but he doesn't allow that run to score, and it remains 0-0. We had a 14-11 game to start day three. This is 0-0, though, as we go to the bottom of the third, so a little more pitching dominated. Got a guest up in the booth. This is Leah Van from Cron.com, so she's here working in Houston. The last couple of years, she's been in Baton Rouge and covering this Tiger team, so you were part of covering a national championship last year. I know this is hard to ask, but what are some of the memories that kind of jump into your mind first and foremost about that amazing year? Oh, wow, you're, like, really putting me on right the spot Right off the stop, here. Oh from locking that softball up. I mean, I think the one that stands out the most is the Paul Skeens versus Rhett Lauder matchup in the College World Series. You had two of the best pitchers in college baseball just going at it. And I mean, we were all holding our breaths, waiting for somebody to crack and, you know, get a hit. And it was just such good pitching. And normally that's pretty boring for a lot of people. But I think everybody was really on their really on their toes. But other than that, I think I always tell people this, too. Uh, the box sold out for the Tennessee series last year. And you had, again, a lot of, like, top draft prospects. Scouts were there. It was just a really exciting time to be in Baton Rouge. And there was a lot of fans that were really loud, especially since I think it was the LSU women's basketball team had qualified for the finals at that That's point right. during the game. So it was really incredible to see. Well, tell us the highlight for you. Like, you know, you started covering LSU when Jay took over as head coach. Paxton Kling is going to be out at first base. Oh, that was a play by Powell. I thought for sure that was going to be an infield single or a base hit in the left, but Powell somehow got up and made that perfect throw to first base. Yeah, Rob Kling of a base hit. 
But to go back to our question, so talk about, you know, being with Jay for the first year he arrived and then all the way through the World Series, but what's been the highlight for you? Oh, man, that's really hard. I mean, I guess just uh, falling in love with college baseball, really. I mean, I guess you're in, like, the best place to do it. Uh, I really had no idea what I was getting into when I took the job. <laughs> and um, the spirit of the fans, I mean, interacting with them, whether it's good or bad, they can be a little sassy at you, but they also embrace you. And um, I think also just covering the College World Series was an unforgettable experience as someone who has been as a fan and to come back as a reporter was really meaningful. And all the stories I got to tell, I mean, I got to cover Dylan Cruz, I got to cover Paul Skeens, got to cover Trey Morgan. Uh, I covered all these guys where I went to spring training recently and I saw Dylan Cruz knock a double, you know, <laughs> as a Washington national. I thought that this is surreal. We're both here. It's like a proud mom moment almost. <laughs> <laughs> so the one thing Jay told us this week about maybe the expectations surrounding his program, what it's like in that bubble from a college baseball standpoint in Baton Rouge. And listen, I'm in Arkansas a lot. I understand that too in the SEC. It's a little bit different. He said, uh, I can't believe at times how many people care. And he said, I don't mind the expectations. I'd rather temper them down than try and elevate those expectations. But I got to believe you feel it when you cover the team, too. You understand how passionate this fan base is. Oh, yeah. I mean, Tuesday night games against Nickel State, uh, you know, UL, somebody else, they care. And they want to make sure you're tweeting about the game <laughs> updates. They want to make sure you're, read their, you're writing about it. God forbid I go to running club for one night, take the night off, where I go on a date or something, you know? Josh Pearson oh. lifts one high in the air, deep Play right Pearson. center field. That ball's going to find the bullpen. And Play Tiger Nation excited for the first run of the game on a Josh Pearson homer. Well, Pearson puts a charge into that one, and we've seen some balls fly out of here today. Brett, that one uh, makes it to the bullpen. Felt like he got enough backspin on this one, though, Pat, that sure uh, yeah, it was going to continue to care. A lot of carry on that ball. Yep, Tigers are happy. They'll collect that one. I'm sure he'll get the game ball for uh, at least the first home run of the day. <laughs> Might see another one. Tommy White's up. up. Jay Johnson coming out. Uh, was there something as far as maybe a bat flip of some sort or not? I'm curious because... Yeah, there was a warning given. I know there was a warning given to the LSU bench earlier. They were kind of chirping at some of the uh, Bobcats. They might be too close to the grass for their celebration. So, you know, Jay wasn't very happy yeah. with that first warning. He's less thrilled now. Yeah, he's, uh, he's pretty upset. Well, Leah, while this is going on, I mean, obviously plenty of excitement around LSU baseball, and you got to be a part of that for a couple of years. But you're a Texas girl. You didn't go into this thing uh, as an LSU fan, but it sounds like you've kind of turned into a fan. I wouldn't say that. Come on, y'all. <laughs> you can't do that as a journalist, Pat. You can't throw it. Can. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I think a lot of journalists are kind of lying. I mean, in the sense that how can you not root for the team that you're covering sometimes in a way like you're getting to know these guys yeah. on a day to day basis. You're calling their parents, their old coaches. You're telling their stories. You're like the inside of you, like as a human being, you're like, man, I hope they do well. Right. But you can't just be in the press box like rooting for them. Right. Um, but yeah, as a Texas girl, it was it was a difficult transition. They found out I was from Texas. I'm like, we don't play that often. That's Why right. do you all have a problem with me? Like, <laughs> you know? Well, as Tommy White steps in the box, he had an amazing year last year. And, of course, it kind of gets lost with the Skeens and Cruz combination. And he's going to get himself a base hit here as it drops in front of Farber. He's going to try for two, and he's going to be out. And uh, you got to play that guy deep. And he dropped one in in front of the outfielders, but out trying to stretch it to two. So is there a... A note or a thought about Tommy that uh, pops to mind after covering him last year when he was surrounded by the number one and number two overall picks. You know, Tommy, I can tell, has a lot of personality, but he doesn't like to be interviewed in front of cameras. Um, <laughs> he was way better one on one, but, <laughs> you know, he's he's a fireball. Uh, I love that kid and he's really fun to watch. Don't hit him with a pitch, though. Nope. I feel like that really makes him mad. <laughs> I can see that. Think about last year, though, the expectations. LSU came in, everybody said they're the undoubted number one. And for a while, they were. Didn't win the SEC regular season, didn't win the conference tournament either. And yet, there they were at the end. So they had to kind of endure that pressure, really, from beginning to end in that season. 
Yeah, I mean, obviously it's LSU, so they expect to be in the College World Series and winning it all every single year. Um, ooh. So that liner kicked out of the glove of Mora, and Brady Neal's going to get himself, I would imagine, a base hit. But, and they had all this talent coming into the year. You know, you're bringing in Paul Skeens and Thatcher Hurd, and those are two high-caliber high guys, and Tommy White. And so it was kind of, you know, but the SEC is so competitive and so full of talent that you can't count anybody out. And so I thought that was what made it so interesting is that they came in as kind of the team to beat. They became an underdog midway through. And then they once again were the team to beat That's when right. it came time for the College World yeah. Series. Well, do you have any like good inside baseball stories that maybe the fans of public don't know about that team last year in terms of winning the World Series? Oh man, I wish I would have prepared me. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean, I guess like the Jello Shot Challenge was always really fun at the College World Series. If y'all are familiar with that, I That's I right. did see some of the 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 baseball parents there hanging out uh, specifically Dylan Cruz's dad was huge <laughs> on the right? jello shot challenge and I think everybody know. knows that it's pretty well known and yeah. uh, but it was kind of fun to you know see them a little bit have you know having a good time and enjoying the uh, the atmosphere <laughs> yeah well, I mean, it's, it's a tense atmosphere even for parents you know my sons both played college baseball and you get into those uh, tight situations and it's you feel it as a parent I'm, I'm sure you felt it as a reporter as well like hey be really cool if uh, LSU wins this thing. A few more jello shots, you're not feeling anything. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's the key. They were very strong, though. You had to that's right. You need lot. lots of them. <laughs> Dravinsky strikes out. Leah Van, thanks for joining us and spending some time. Sure thing. Thanks for having me. Indeed. Josh Pearson added a home run as well. There she goes. One nothing Tigers as we have completed three at Minute Maid. Well, it's a one nothing game as we go to the fourth inning. Somebody order out, get some Uber Eats there for a smoothie of some sort. What do we got? <laughs> it looks like tropic, tropic time in the uh, Texas State dugout. We'll talk to Coach Trout soon. His Bobcats trying to go to 3 and 0. Here at Minute Maid this weekend, and he was so excited when they got this opportunity. He told us he didn't even ask who they were playing. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Had someone said, "Oh, by the way, uh, you know, you're playing Texas and you're going to play LSU," you might have said, "Well, hold on a minute, let me think about this." <laughs> he didn't think, and uh, it's worked out nicely. It has worked out great. Texas State trying to go for their third win of the weekend. Now they're working from behind. Mirai's got a single back in the first one for seven this weekend. Wave it a miss against Thatcher Hurd. Yeah so far Hurd has been sharp. Not a base hit and a walk in the first. Been uh, pretty clean. Ever since the double with Ian Collier lead off the third but he worked around that nicely. 
Two strike pitch to Ramirez. Waves and misses. Thatcher Hurd struck out the first two batters he faced. Has not struck out anybody since until he K's Ramirez to begin the fourth inning. Fastball that catches the outside corner and Ramirez just swings through it. First out in the fourth. This is Pena. Bounced out to Jones at first to end the first. Well, that pitch had a little bit of horizontal movement in there for strike one. And I slider from Hurd and 50th pitch of the night for him. 33 strikes. Really showing good command of all of his pitches so far. Through that same pitch in the same spot. Dalen Pena, part of that big story on Friday and that went over University of Houston. Hit the home run in the ninth to tie it. Yeah, I hate to forget the dramatic moments this weekend because there have been a few that have followed, but uh, Pena with a base hit. Reaches with one out in the fourth inning. You heard came right back with that slider again. He kept his hands back nice, just drove right back up the middle. This is Galloway. Thirty two games a year ago, seventeen starts. It was a Texas State team that in the two previous years has won eighty three games. High pop up first base side and this one will be out of play. Pat 18 seniors and we talk about college baseball never being older. I mean it used to be if you'd get a senior at say an LSU it would be kind of a program guy maybe a player that might get a chance in the minors but probably wasn't on that path and now you're seeing teams load up with seniors and what a benefit I, I got to believe that's going to be at several times this year for the Bobcats. Yeah it really is. It's a veteran lineup and. You know, got a couple of good fresh faces in there like Farber. But yeah, the rest of the lineup, at least today, is seniors, juniors, and a couple of sophomores. But really strong up and down for Steve Trout. And, of course, uh, that veteran presence, you know, what it brings is guys that have experience, the, the bright lights don't uh, don't interfere with their play. They just go out and play the game. And there's no, no panic in this team as we've seen them a couple of times get down in games and come back and... That's what you get, kind of that steadiness, that consistency from an older lineup. How about the work gloves he's wearing right now? He could go make some fence, <laughs> jump on the back of a horse with those things. You could go through a pair of batting gloves about every couple of weeks. How about the work gloves from Galloway? Going to wave and miss. You know, it was a few years ago, I cover a lot of softball in the summers, and there was a team from Colorado or Wyoming, and all the girls had the work gloves on. I mean, <laughs> they weren't going to go through but one pair of those over the course of the season. So he went fishing after that one. i got to believe you can grip that bat and then some with those things. Yeah, no doubt. Just to use those to dig post holes. There's a chopper to third. White, can they get two? There's one. Back to first, quickly turned. Jones kept his foot in the bag. How about that play at first base? Pat, you talked about him getting better. No, no, no doubt. Jared Jones has really improved defensively and does a great job there to complete the ball play. White to Milam to Jones.
LSU leading one nothing as we go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Steve Trout, the head coach of Texas State, joins us. Coach, I'm not sure what your text messages have been like in the last couple of days or your emails or whatnot, but uh, can you give us an idea of what it's been like, the reception, the excitement after these two exciting, dramatic wins here in Houston? Yeah, way more text messages in the last weekend, I promise you that. So it was, uh, yeah, it's been fun. You know, it, it kind of reminds you of the run we made in 22 and some of the wins we had. And, and uh, yeah, Bobcat Nation's live and well and uh, fired up for this team. Well, Steve, uh, you know, looking at Aaron Lugo's swing yesterday, of course, the, the bubble heard round in college baseball, but do you guys work on that, blowing the bubble before you actually hit the home run? <laughs> that is not part of our drills. We do not do that. We do not do that at all. So uh, I asked him in the, in the clubhouse, said, hey, what was the bubble thing? He goes, I was just trying to stay relaxed, and uh, that's about as relaxed as I see it um, in that moment. So. Milo will get to second with the infield base hit and then the uh, throwing air. Anything you've picked up about this team that you didn't already know, Steve? Obviously, when you have a couple of wild games or some comebacks, you lose a lead and then you still win the game, you feel like maybe an identity is starting to develop. Yeah, you know, I think even even last weekend, I know we, we lost two or three um, in the tournament, but uh, this team was resilient. They're tough. They they battled back and they, they never felt like they're out of it. Uh, we did that against quality opponents this weekend and uh, then, you know, really learned some things about some guys yesterday on the mound, especially, you know, Matthew Tiffany was Tippy was phenomenal um, late innings, and so it was uh, it was really good. So still trying to figure out our personnel a little bit, but uh, this team's a tough team and excited to watch you come back today again. Yeah, Steve, it's a veteran team, but uh, you've added a couple of fresh faces, one in particular, Ryan Farber. Tell us about him. He just seems like a special player. He does. He does. The game's not too big for him. He's uh, he's definitely uh, he's definitely uh, beyond his years. So one second. Hey, we get C going. It's a base hit to left field by Jared Jones. Milam stops at third base, and there's runners on the corners. Sorry about that. He just controlled the bullpen as well. But yeah, he's just a really good player, right? He has quality at bats. Uh, he knows the game really well. Uh, he was even apologizing after he got thrown out last night in the ninth or in the eighth, trying to double steal. And uh, you know, that's aggressive play. And, and I'm always in for aggressive. So uh, yeah, we're, we're lucky to have Ryan on our team, and, and he's, he's a really good player. Hey Steve, I need. I know you need to uh, go here soon, but I want to let I you know pitching, that we I got had a pitching talk here. I got a little time right, now. You so. say, hey, we had your. Uh, <laughs> University president on with us for half an inning yesterday, and it came during the Chase Mora Grand Slam. I think we may have got you a contract extension. I'm not sure, <laughs> but he was pretty pumped up. He was pretty excited. We might have been able to get you an extra year tacked onto the back end of your deal. I appreciate that. I, Kelly Dampson is the best, uh, but I'll let my agent know. I appreciate the work, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome, Steve. Well, hey, man, thank you so much for joining us. I know you got this ball game to take care of. And uh, but what a weekend for you guys. Congratulations on the two big wins and going for three and oh. Yeah, I appreciate all the coverage and, and uh, all the support of the program. And uh, this is one of the best tournaments out there. So we always come anytime they ask. And uh, yeah, hopefully we make a little comeback here, make it make it interesting and see what happens. But uh, fun weekend and uh, let's finish it off. Absolutely. Good luck the rest of the year. Thanks, guys. There he goes. Named after former Cub Steve Trout. His parents were what, 1984 Chicago Cub fans? That's right. That's the story. Yep. Never knew that. He, he kind of kept that hidden for a while, then it came out. And now he's uh, made it public that he uh, was named after the, the Cubs pitcher Steve Trout. At least right. he wasn't named Keith after Keith Moreland, who was down the hallway <laughs> earlier today. <laughs> That's <or> good. <laughs> Sarge. That probably wouldn't have worked. Gary Matthews. That's right. Sean That's Dunstan right. spelled different. <laughs> Chad Massengill makes his first visit to the rubber, and Sam Hall's done a good job up to this point. Gave up the solo home run of the third. A couple of uh, hits the throwing error from his second baseman, Mora. And then Jared Jones drops in a base hit as well. So first and third situation with no outs in the fourth. Hall's going to have to work around some trouble. See how Milam's running at third. He may have kind of rolled an ankle a bit as we were visiting with Coach Trout. Brown had an infield single. There's only time in. That one is just fouled outside the bag at first. Past Patino. So Jake Brown trying to work that hole between first and second. Of course, Alec Patino having to hold on Jared Jones at the moment. LSU leading one to nothing. Threatening to add to that advantage in the fourth. I think Coach Trout was uh, in disbelief when I told him I got him a contract extension. But we were pretty <laughs> close. We could have put that together at some point. I think so. It's uh, President Kelly Danfus was pretty energized yesterday. For good reason. 
you think about what winning does on campus and when an athletic director understands that it's one thing when a school president is all in favor of adding to the facilities creating yeah. that student experience for the athletes and, and then building on a bowl game and running out of beer and all that comes <laughs> with that all the stories athletics serving as the front porch to a university and oftentimes you see schools really go through huge enrollment bumps when teams have a lot of success no, that's exactly right yeah there's there's so much to be said about that and the school presidents who understand that and get that and know that uh, anytime they put a dollar into the athletic program it usually returns its value at least two times that because of not only you know the the winning facilities and the things that you bring that student athletes want to be a part of but then they start winning and then it draws other students into your school so yeah to me it's an investment it's not an expense when you have athletic dollars going into your budget and keep in mind they're trying to still raise I think about eight million dollars to upgrade their stadium their cages the locker room the seats still fundraising and you know you never stop doing that but it's a little more challenging when there's a lot of donors being asked for NIL too so you know you want to get those facilities and everything to an optimum level because there's a lot of hands in the wallet yeah. in today's day and age. That's right the NIL has you know name image and likeness has totally changed the the landscape in college athletics it's not only are donors being asked to fund the facilities movements it's also uh, to try to hang on to players Brown lifts one out in the right center it's going to drop Milam will score Jones never stopped he's going to third Brown to second base in safely with a hustle double and the Tigers have a two nothing lead You know, second time around the lineup usually proves to be an advantage for hitters. LSU starting to figure out Sam Hall. This job by Jake Brown and didn't get full extension, but just gets enough. Ball was up maybe closer to uh, the handle than he wanted it to be. Able to dump it in at a perfect spot. And that'll be an RBI and. We are going to see our first pitching change. Steve Trout has already made the motion to the bullpen. So Sam Hall's day will be done. And put up a couple of zeros before Pearson got the homer for LSU in the third and the Tigers have added a run here in the fourth but not done. So pitching change for the Bobcats will step aside to nothing LSU. Well Taylor C comes on and we've reached that point in the weekend Pat where we're starting to see relief pitchers for the uh, second time. That's exactly right Taylor C on for his second opportunity this weekend and. I put a halt to this LSU rally. See the six foot sophomore transfer from Angelina College. Played locally Lake Jackson Texas not very far from here Brazoswood High School and. Taylor C making his sixth appearance of the season has two and two thirds innings under his belt. 
struck out four. It's not issued in walk. It's not giving up a hit either. Spent a little bit of time at his high school. You could tell you're not far from the Gulf when you get uh, down, down to Brazos Brazos Wood. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, a low three quarter delivery. You can see with uh, C making his warm up pitches. Good sinking fastball. It's a slider and a changeup to complement it. Working here, no outs in the fourth. I'd say this is where the Bobcats would really like to start accumulating some outs. The problem is if Braswell gets on, then this lineup really kickstarts over. And Braswell bounced to short his only time in. First one from C misses down and out. Well, he's really being patient on those first two pitches to Braswell. Yeah. A couple of sweeping breaking balls from C and Braswell did a good job seeing it well. Not offering it either one. Next pitch over but a little bit low and it's three and up. 90 miles an hour on that sinker. From the full line needs a strike and doesn't get it. That is a four pitch walk. And I think the one theme we've seen that will probably keep each and every one of these six coaches up at night or their pitching coaches is so many times, Pat, we've seen a reliever come on. And, and these situations and scenarios have not been great as far as runners on base, nobody out, whatnot. But that inability to start accumulating some outs and then to just tack on a few more base runners to the point where now you're really in trouble. Yeah, on it. Really gets down to the bullpen and who you trust to come in to kind of be the stopper in that situation. And you know, it's early in the game, so Steve Trout's trying to bridge this game with with C. But yeah, that's been an issue all throughout the weekend, Brett. And uh, a lot of big crooked innings. It's just the inability of these pitching staffs to stop the bleeding. Paxton Kling is 0 for 2. Updating. He's 1 for 3, and he's going to knock it a couple of runs with a rope to left. Jones will score. Brown will score. The Tigers have doubled their lead. It's 4 nothing. Think about the tools this kid has. Maybe a potential high draft pick in Paxton Kling. And he had grounded out and struck out, and then he just hits a laser to left. Yeah, well, anytime you face a sinker ball type pitcher you've got to really be patient wait for ball to come up in the zone and that's exactly what Paxton Kling does that sinker when it's up it tends to straighten out Kling just straightened it out to left field for a couple of RBI sure did Josh Pearson had the homer an inning ago it went out into the bullpen in right center So C came on maybe for just one batter. We'll find out. Or a couple of batters. Yep. Trout on his way out. Maybe it for C. And you know, the walk to Braswell, the bases loaded single to Kling. Double barrel action in the Bobcat bullpen. Steve Trout also sensing the same thing we are, Brett. We just got through talking about it, how quickly these games get away when bullpen can't hold it down. So the Cats are going to the bullpen. LSU has jumped the lead up to 4 0.
Rhett McCafferty. He's also making his second appearance this weekend. Yeah, the local product from Cypher High School. He'll stand six foot. Senior. Mentioned Brett's second appearance of this tournament. His fifth appearance of the season, six and a third innings pitched. He's been a four hits, couple runs, only walked one, and struck out nine. The senior lefty called upon to try to keep this four nothing lead where it is. Kind of have the feeling that this is a really crucial inning for the Bobcats to try and limit any further damage. I think so. We've seen this a uh, lot of runs scored by Texas State, but the way Thatcher Hurd has been pitching, and of course the bullpen in LSU is in great shape today. Steve Trout senses the same thing that can't uh, allow too many more runs before this thing gets away. Of course, I say that in the game we had yesterday, it was six nothing Texas State. Before you know it, Texas is leading late, and then the game we had this morning it was an 11 3 Longhorn lead and Vandy scored 11 an answer to win 14 11. And Josh Pearson showing bunt. He's looking for his third hit already and we're in the fourth inning. Just did drift off the corner from McCafferty. This was the homer in the third. Boy, he backspun this ball out there in the bullpen. Sure did. Nice swing. Well, just kept carrying. Boy, you love that as a hitter. Ball lifted to left. Pena. A lot of room before he gets to the track. He'll make the catch, and that's a important step one for the Bobcats. Towards getting out of this inning, especially with White and Neal do up. Yeah, big out because Pearson wasn't able to advance either Braswell or Paxton Kling. White is singled and also flied out to right. Remember his first year was at NC State he had 27 home runs last year 24 so with a couple this season you could easily see him getting to the number that Matt Laporta put up with 74 not that long ago. Just crazy numbers for Tommy Tanks. First team all American College World Series all tournament team. 24 doubles, 102 hits. Won't forget that walk off homer against Wake. And you think about walk off home runs in the College World Series in LSU lore. I mean, it usually starts and ends with one guy, and that yeah. would be Warren Morris in 1996 at, at uh, the old Rosenblatt in Omaha. But when you start to put your name on that list with Warren Morris, <laughs> a small list, heady company. It's a little different. This is a guy you expect to see the big leagues at some point, probably next two to three years. Ground ball to the right side. All he does is drive in runs. Braswell will turn third and score. LSU's made it a 5 nothing lead. Got to simplify it, Pat. Put the ball in play. There was an open hole, and White just chopped one into right field. Well, he defeats the shift, and it's just a, a smart, mature hitter. It's Tommy White. You know, everybody gets uh, oohs and ahs over his power, but it's the ability to handle the bat like that, where he takes advantage of an infield shift, and produces the fifth LSU run. He just does so many well things well with the bat. You know, such good bat to ball skills. It's not just all about power for him. Brady Neal has a single and two at bats. He had a couple of home runs against Rice back on Wednesday. So it makes sense he's up there to bunt. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of a safety squeeze situation here for the Tigers and Jay Johnson catching that Bobcat defense back on the infield said hey, okay well I'll just take advantage of of that you know not able to get it down though. Brady Neal did not play after April 8th of last year. 
Had the two homers against Rice. The pitch for a strike from McCafferty. Neal was drafted way back at a high school out of IMG in the 17th round by the Brewers. Still only one out this inning. McCafferty would love a strikeout. Pretty good slider fouled back. Sure was. Kept the at bat alive. And Close enough to swing at. Neal keeps the at bat alive. You could see Collier wanting that one further off the corner, and Neal would not chase. Four runs home this inning for LSU. Here at the Astros Foundation College Classic, Brett Dolan, Pat Combs. It's been a lot of fun this weekend. A lot of great baseball, and this Bobcat team has had uh, quite a flair for the dramatic. Had a lot of work to do, though, to get back into this one against LSU. And Cafferty really trying to get Neil to chase. Neil's run the count full. And takes ball four. So that one hurts. That'll bring up Travinsky, who will be the ninth man to hit this inning. And also a right handed batter. Chance to take aim against this lefty for those Crawford boxes in left. Last fastball didn't miss by much, but it missed in. Not the guy you want to face with bases loaded. He's swung the hot bat last couple of nights for LSU. The victim of a couple of strikeouts though in this game. Indeed. He struck out a couple of times. But a Tiger at every base. Already a four run inning. And Travinsky can double that with one mighty swing. And the ball has been jumping today. We've been playing indoor baseball. Sometimes when you open the roof the wind kind of helps you and pushes some balls out to left field. Yeah a little jet stream. Today it's been uh, pure strength of these hitters. Two oh pitch with the bases loaded. Boy, if you're Travinsky, you got to be thinking you're going to get a fastball, and he did, and yeah. still took it. Good take by Travinsky and McCaffrey really struggled with the command. Last seven pitches have been balls. Swinging three and zero is Travinsky. He was trying to take out that train on the tracks in left field. Got a decent pitch to swing at too. Fastball middle in. How was that off the leg of? Ian Collier, the catcher. Hey, Bobby, wake up out there. You're in play. <laughs> Hayden Travinsky wants to hit one up on top of those tracks. See what McCafferty wants to do. The 3 1 pitch. That's a call strike. Might have been in. Thought so too. Yeah. And Eric Gaucher given the strike call but I think this pitch is off the plate and yeah, no doubt almost in the batter's box bases loaded full count to Travinsky hard hit maybe a chance to get a force at second Powell's relay to first not in time Laura had to kind of surround that smash and couldn't quickly feed it to Powell otherwise that DP might have ended the inning instead LSU cashes in another run. Yeah, it looked like Morrill just lost his footing at second base. Oh, had a little bit of uh, spit on it backed up away from him and by the time he was able to corral it backhand flip to Powell how low to Patino not in time but he, he was contending with the umpire as well. Yeah trying to find that baseball. It's a wonder he was able to even come up with that the way he anticipated that ball being a couple of feet in a different spot than what he got. Yeah, kind of got shaded out there.
Milam led off this inning by beating out an infield single. Jay Johnson comped Milam for me as a, a Robert Moore, a guy I saw at Arkansas. And I think it was last year Jay was on the MLB Network draft show. And he was fantastic because he knows all the top college players and he knows most of the high school players because he's probably at least thrown right. out a, a fishing <laughs> line to see if they're interested <laughs> and able to well. kind of communicate. I told him he made it look too easy when I saw him this summer. Well, Milo batting around this inning for LSU and Tigers have had their fifth run this inning, sixth of the game. Gaffney having some command issues yet again. Some more activity ongoing in that Texas State bullpen. Milam, the number one ranked player in the state of New Mexico last year, Gatorade Player of the Year. And takes one a little bit off the corner. Of course, no doubt he's a huge Alex Bregman fan. He said Bregman had a huge influence on him, so he saw what Alex did going to LSU and then the pro ranks and kind of wants to follow that path, as you can imagine. Yeah. Pretty good legacy there for. He takes a walk. Nope. Called a strike. Wow. <laughs> so what might have the freshman not so sure. And uh, we've got a couple of wide strike calls this inning. That ball's way inside. Must hit his back kneecap. Runner goes. 3 2. Foul back into the upper tank. Yeah, Jay Johnson not happy. Second call we've seen, one on Travinsky and that one on Milam that about three or four inches inside off the plate. A long pause before another 3 2 pitch. Here it comes. And that is high, and that's ball four. So Milam is going to reach twice this inning. And the bases are loaded again. You play an LSU team, and you, you just can't. Offer free passes. This this lineup's tough enough to beat. Now we've seen the uh, third walk of the inning. And uh, yet another visit to the mound. Steve Trout trying to find somebody that can throw strikes. Kind of a helpless feeling, isn't it, Pat? Trying to find somebody that can just give you a few innings right now, get a few outs. Really is. It's uh, the Bobcats come in today, of course, winning the first two games of this weekend, and I'm sure that was their goal. If we could walk out here with a winning record, we'd be happy. I'll tell you about the next pitcher in just a moment. Peyton Zabel comes on trying to find a way to end this long fourth inning and get the Bobcats back in the dugout. Now well, the tall senior six seven of him from Pierre South Dakota. 
pitched at Iowa Western Community College. And is able a uh, couple of starts already for Texas State this season, but making his first appearance out of the bullpen. Been a bit of a struggle for him. Five innings. He's given up four hits, four earned runs. Some elevated ERA, but command has been the issue for him. Eight walks in those five innings, six strikeouts. Steve Trout, the Bobcats, hoping he will find that command today. Yeah, South Dakota native, Iowa Western Community College product. Really good baseball juco. He gets his opportunity to try to get that final out in the fourth, and then if you can get some outs, you might stick around in this game for quite some time. Jared Jones about to step in. Let's take a look back to Friday. Watch this swing against the Texas Longhorns. Disappears out of your camera shot. He yeah, had it sure out of the did. park so quickly. <laughs> and Jones, one of those guys with that real quiet swing, great approach. Yeah, the talent is evident, is the phrase I've heard about Jared Jones this week, and for good reason. And singled and walked already in this game. 14 homers, 45 knocked in a year ago. The sophomore at a Marietta, Georgia. Yeah, the swinging skills have always been there. He's always been a solid hitter. There's some big shoes to fill at first base, replacing Trey Morgan. And just a really athletic first baseman and great defender. Talked about Jones improving in that area and certainly has shown today. A chance to bust this game wide open. Good pitch. Strike three. Inning over. But. The Tigers score five runs in the inning on five hits. Big lead as we hit to the fifth. Single game tickets for the 2024 season are on sale now, so make sure you get your tickets to see your Houston Astros on their relentless pursuit for baseball's biggest prize. Visit Astros.com slash tickets to get yours today. Fans sing it along as this game begrudgingly moves into the fifth inning. <laughs> Six to nothing, our score. That was a long fourth. It was. 11 men batting. And Thatcher heard back out there. And Aaron Lugo, yesterday's hero, singles into center. So he had a rocket to center for an out earlier. And this time gets the base hit. Well, Thatcher heard had a long time to wait to get himself back on the rubber. 
about a 30 minute half inning as we saw three pitching changes from Texas State. Lugo greets him. With the base hit up the middle. To start this fifth inning. And this is Davis Powell who flied to right his only time in. Yeah I got to believe for Hurd you're happy to have the run support you were sitting a long time. Yeah. You know Jay did tell us he was kind of working through a few things maybe mechanically just trying to you know take advantage of this opportunity to piece it all together as you get towards conference season SEC play. I'm going to be pleased with what he sees so far. I think you're right. 38 strikes and 59 pitches. 64 percent strikes coming into the inning. It's like mechanically just really keeping things simple and repeatable. That's been the goal here last couple of weeks for him. Soft liner towards Pearson and left. It'll hang up long enough for him to make the catch. And that's the first out of the inning. Breaking ball fooled Davis Powell and hit out in front of it. It's easy to try to cheat to that fastball from Hurd. Start out the game sitting in the mid 90s and the velocity has stayed there. Ian Collier doubled off the top of the fence and left just missed a home run by maybe a couple of feet in the third inning and he was stranded at third base. He is the only Bobcat to reach third in the game. It really does bring that uh, leg kick up just a bit. Raises that left leg and then comes down directly towards the plate. Yeah, one thing you'll have to consider going forward, though, is trying to shorten that kick. Too much? Yeah, it's just a little slow to the plate. You can see that. And the age of uh, Major League Baseball when everything favors the base runner now. And have to definitely modify that in the future. Watch him tuck this almost up to his chest. Now yeah. Texas State's only stolen seven bases this year, but I think your point's a good one, Pat. There will be some teams that will try and get on and run against him. Yeah. Three and one to call your one on one out for the Bobcats here in the fifth inning. And especially at the next level, too. You've got you know the restriction on pickoff moves you can make to any base now in the major leagues. The bigger bases have shortened up the baseline right. for base runners. So a lot of things really in the favor of the base dealer. Yeah. Trying to encourage people to run because in this era of analytics there's that risk reward on what's the benefit of stealing the base versus the risk of losing one of your three outs. Yeah. Let's see if the Bobcats want to put Lugo in motion here three two. Oh he took oh, off. He got a huge <laughs> running jump. Yeah he did. Collier will strike out but uh, that was a hop skip jump step 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 and there was still no movement so. An easy base for Lugo. Not many times you're running down six nothing but that one was uh, pretty easy. <laughs> yeah. Lugo uh, took that first two steps and said I hope he doesn't turn and pick because I'm out. Made it uh, easy to second though. Good anticipation. Or not checking first base in that full count. Back to the top of the lineup for Farber. He takes strike one. Good breaking ball. Good curve from Thatcher Hurd. Yeah, Hurd has spotted up that breaking ball. Really nice. Opened a couple of sequences and. He's got the bigger breaking ball, the curveball, and he's got the tighter slider, kind of a cut fastball. That handcuffed mm. Travinsky. I think Travinsky thought something else was coming. That's a good stop. Yeah. He was not ready for that fastball. Heard two pitches away from 70, trying to get through five innings. He got the pitch calm watch on. How do you get crossed up when you got the watch? It's supposed to be the point of it, <laughs> <laughs> at least one of the points. And yet 
Vanderbilt I think was one of the first teams to wear the watch and they were pretty much every single time today where Tim Corbin's going the old fashioned signals yeah. to his I saw kids. that yeah and they had the uh, they had the earpiece intercom system in as well with their catcher and all kinds of technology going ball and two strikes to farm pokes it to the left side Braswell can't get it the ball kicks away and it's going to provide a run so Lugo by swiping second base able to score on that ball that was kicked by the LSU shortstop and the Bobcats are on the board. Yeah, it's probably an infield base hit. I don't think Braswell would have had a play. But the uh, the mistake I think on Braswell's part was he just should have knocked the ball down. I mean, he was trying to look like he was going to make a play with it. There's no way he was going to get Farber at first base and he just knocks it down, keeps it in front, keeps that run from scoring. Well, we've seen a few comebacks of six and eight runs and whatnot. Base hit RBI for Farber. We do count that as a single for Farber. No, makes sense. You weren't going to yeah. probably throw him out. The kicker was you're right. Just by not even cleanly coming up with that baseball, it provided the extra base in the run to Lugo. And Patino tried to hold back, but uh, plate umpire said that is a swing. And it's strike one. Tino asking maybe that same question. Keeping a close eye on Farber. That's going to bring uh, Nate Yeski out from the dugout. Talk about how they want to approach Patino here with Farber at first base. The Bobcats would like to pick up another run, get Farber into scoring position if they can. Is this taking his temperature to see where he's at physically? If he's feeling good, is this simply strategy on on facing Patino because he really hasn't had many bumps in the road to this point? Yeah, I think it's more strategy. How they want to approach Patino. The pitch count is at 71, so I think there's still something left in the tank for Hurd. Maybe uh, an issue with Yeski saying, hey, don't get too distracted with Farber. Make sure you got your mind made up to go home and deliver a good pitch here. Nothing and one the count to Patina. 0 for 2 today, four hits so far this weekend in the previous two games. Both wins. For Texas State. In fact, a pair of 2 0 teams. Vanderbilt won all three of their games with the big come from behind effort, scoring 11 an answer to take down Texas. So we'll have another 3 0 team emerging from this game. Hurts pitch, cut on a missed. Chase Mora on deck if Patino can keep this fifth inning alive. Farber is going to run. Pearson chasing that ball into the corner. It's off the fence. For some reason, with two outs, Farber stopped. And he's going to get to third, but he's confused. Was there some type of obstruction, interference, or did he just simply forget how many outs there were? Yeah, I think he got deked at second base. LSU, oh, strategic uh, aspect yeah, of it. Strategery there, but why would you get deep with two? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you can't get deep there. So we've seen a base run mistake by Farber. That would have been the second Bobcat run. Because he was running with the pitch. So when this ball takes this bounce, it's probably going to be another run. And right there you see only Farber going to third base. Yeah, you wonder if uh, Something was said to him like, hey, it's a pop up. It's foul ball. You know, you never know what, what some of these infielders can pull on you. <laughs> but Farber pulled up. It worked. Chase Mora, a dribbler to short. Braswell has to hurry the throw. And he threw it away. And two runs are going to score. 
Just a dribbler to short, and Braswell's had a tough inning. A good throw gets Mora, but that was way offline, and two more runs come across on the two out, E6. Hey, took kind of a bad route to the ball. He did. Not sure if uh, Patino crossing in front of him may have distracted him, but it yeah, didn't go straight to it, kind of rounded it off, and then had to make a tough throw across his body. Way wide of first base. Jones could not come up with it. It's going to be a two base error for Braswell. So from 6 0 to 6 3, and here's Ramirez. I thought that Deke might keep a run from scoring, and then immediately that ground ball to Braswell that was thrown away provides two more two out runs. So it's going to be ruled an infield hit and then a throwing error. Couple of tough plays for the Tiger shortstop this inning. One and one to Ramirez. Flip to first. Mora back in diving. Just like that, the Bobcats have cut this lead in half. Well, we've seen this uh, song a time or two. Oh, my goodness, yeah. In the last couple of the days. Somewhat comfortable leads, and all of a sudden, you know, two or three runs get thrown up on the board in maybe an unusual fashion, and then all of a sudden the comeback is on. That hit and then you mix in a free base. Might be it for Hurd. Kind of an innocent starting inning. You gave up the leadoff single to Lugo, but then you got the quick out with Powell and strike call you're out. Last four Bobcat hitters have now reached. All right, long ball from Pena. This game is tied. A moment ago it was 6 0. They're going to try to let uh, Hurd work himself out of this. Problem is they didn't have anybody up in the bullpen because there really wasn't much need. Yeah. Still good stuff. 94 on the fastball. It's his 79th pitch. Remember LSU left the bases loaded after they scored five runs last inning. It felt like they could have put more on the board. And all of a sudden now Texas State with three in the fifth. No appeal. Well, we've seen this Bobcat team do this a time or two, and they don't mind playing from behind. They do not, and that gets back to the 18 seniors on this team. And Pena is junior, but certainly a lot of veteran players to the point where even when you're facing the defending national champions who are 10 and 1 this year, you get down 6 0. There might be some teams that are starting to think, when is the bus leave for San Marcos? Right. <laughs> but not them. <laughs> no. No panic in the dugout. Not with this group. Wave and a miss. And that was a pitch that was left a bit elevated. Yeah, and it was. Pena swung through it. It's a big swing. Hanging slider. Got away with that pitch. Thatcher Hurd has some LSU fans on their feet trying to get through this inning. He gets the wave and a miss from Pena. Got him to go fishing. Strange inning, though. Bobcats strand a pair, but they score three to get right back in this game.
I've seen more popcorn, popcorn tubs as hats this weekend, Pat, than I've seen in a long time. Yeah. Hopefully it's not uh, that buttery popcorn and makes your hair all greasy. That's right. A lot of youngsters in their uniforms here in the ballpark as well. Bobcat fans excited to see their team climb back in it. 6 3, LSU ready to bat in the bottom of the fifth. And this is Jake Brown, 8 9 and 1, due up for the Tigers. McCafferty, the third pitcher Texas State has used in the game. And pretty good start for Jake Brown, freshman from Sulphur, Louisiana. Yeah, Peyton Zabel, nice breaking ball. Right behind that 92 mile hour fastball. One oh. guy we're not seeing today is Mac Bingham, the Arizona transfer. Had huge numbers last year at Arizona. Played for Jay when he was in Tucson. And guys like Jake Brown and others getting an opportunity to play on this Sunday. Wave it a miss. Good pitch. Breaking ball from Sable. The ball has some nice downward tilt. Good action to it. I had some spin. Yeah. Braswell walked and scored back in that big fourth inning. Dumps one down in the right, falling fast, base hit. Retrieved by Galloway and played back in. Here come the Tigers with their 11th hit of the game. Jam shot for Braswell and have to get out there for the base hit. Let's try to pull those hands in and Part of the barrel to it. Back to the top of the lineup for Paxton Kling. Take strike one. He had a two run single. Just an inning ago in the fourth. He was hit by a pitch twice in that game Wednesday at Rice. Part of a 16 4 victory. They had a huge crowd, almost 4,700 over at Rice at Reckling. So again they've been town for a few days coming in Tuesday playing that Wednesday game and at least able to play the middle game here on a Sunday to head towards Baton Rouge. It's going to be fouled back and out of play. And again they're going to be at Southeastern on Wednesday so you know that'll be quite an atmosphere to go on the road around the state. Making the rounds. A lot of schools around Baton Rouge that you can play those midway games with. And good There's job no of hitting the road with some of those, yeah. Tulane and Nichols and yep. Louisiana. Keep going. Northwestern. Northwestern, yep. I mentioned Jason Kelly was the pitching coach a couple of years ago. Now he's at Washington, and I talked to him about the fact that they have a hard time at Washington playing early in the season at home and then they really have a hard time with midweek games. It's hard to get teams from that region to Seattle. And when he was at LSU you know you have all these teams right. you can play in Tuesday games. <laughs> exactly they want right. nothing yeah. more to play you and to try and beat you. Oregon State same issue and yep. you have got uh, Oregon State Washington State going to go independent next year in baseball. Wave it a miss by Kling. It's really unfortunate for Oregon State considering their baseball tradition and their success. Yeah. No doubt. Mitch Cannon, the great coach at Oregon State. Swing and a miss by Kling. As Abel's worked that breaking ball a couple of times for strikeouts here in the fifth. Nasty pitch. Now Jay Johnson will call the offensive timeout. This will give his bullpen more time. Uh, start somebody fresh here in the, in the sixth inning. Thatcher heard up to 81 pitches in the game. 
picked that 83. Batter is going to be Josh Pearson. He started the scoring back in the third inning with a home run into the bullpen. It's the only home run we've had in this game. That was a bit of a shock after we saw seven in the first game. And the ball was jumping in game one. Two outs, bottom of the fifth. Pearson takes. Is just outside. I thought maybe he was going to get a strike on the corner for McCafferty. Comes with that big over the top breaking ball. Yeah, back door style, and that one does catch the corner. Pearson will wave and miss. So McCafferty works around a bloop single in the fifth inning. Puts up a zero against the Tigers. See if Texas State has some momentum as they come to bat in the sixth. Well, Thatcher, Hurd's day is done, and Christian Little comes on to pitch against Texas State in the top of the sixth inning. Christian Little has all the makeup. The top-line pitcher really had trouble putting it all together. Last year, the statistics would tell the story there, but making his fourth appearance of the season has given up three hits, three runs, and two and a third innings. Struck out three, walked two, but... 6'4", 235 pound senior from St. Louis came out of Vanderbilt. Arm is there. The stuff is good. Just been being able to improve his command. It wasn't that long ago. It was a 6 nothing game now 6 3. So the margin of error is not one that you can afford. Maybe a couple of base runners and the possibility of one swing tying the game. Now I'm curious here. Jay was out there talking to the uh, umpiring crew as he goes to the mound. I don't think this is a true visit because he's taking Eric Gaucher with him. But I don't know what they might be asking. Yeah, checking uh, maybe that his health. If there was a some sort of indication he may have uh, hurt something, but. I thought so too, but they didn't take the yeah. trainer out there. So you see our plane umpire saying no, uh, no visit. No visit. Yeah. Not sure what they saw, but Little's fastball 94, 95, cutter changeup and a curveball. Oh, 
Galloway leads off the top of the sixth. First pitch swinging. Little's going to get one out on one pitch if this one is caught by Brown, and he'll make the play. Economic will begin it to the top of the sixth inning. You like come out of the pen. One pitch, one out. We've had a few pitchers in this weekend that have thrown about 25 pitches and haven't gotten an out before <laughs> right. they've been asked to leave. <laughs> yeah, that's a uh, that is true. Before they were encouraged yeah. to uh, head to the dugout. Lugo's hit the ball hard twice after his heroics yesterday, and he is lined to center and singled and scored. Oh, little chin music. Lucky to get out of the way. Cork 96 at your face. He look a little bit like Ken Griffey Jr. right now. I was going to say, yeah, that tug ain't out, yep. Close up of Little again exactly up on the right. screen. Because that to me, <laughs> there was some Ken Griffey Jr. in that face. Watch your lips. Goodness. He comes back and paints the bottom of the zone on you. Junior college player out of New Mexico, JC. He's just hit three rockets today. He is locked in. Two hits to show for his efforts. Took that pitch up around his helmet, just gets back in the box and hits another laser. Yeah, no, uh, no bubble on this one, but. <laughs> Effective nonetheless. That previous pitch might have hit the bubble. They might as it went right by him. Would have been the first HBP bubble gum. Would have taken some contact. gum with it. Yep. Davis Powell, the eight hole hitter, next in. Off to a bit of a slow start. He's going to one hop one to Braswell. Should be two. Out at second. Back to first. Double play. So little. Faces three, works around the single, gets the double play, remains a 6-3 LSU lead. Gentlemen, I'm not sure if he's awake or not. <laughs> Related to ZZ Top. I was going to say, that looks Maybe. like the drummer. <laughs> oh, he's moving. He's okay. Uh, he's up. He's with us. Yep. And his sunglasses on at night. It's a different band, wasn't it? Well, we've uh, seen a little bit of everything this weekend. Well, the Simba Cam is getting them to <laughs> That's original. their friends. There you go. Put her down. <laughs> 6-3 <laughs> Tigers lead as this game moves into the bottom of the sixth inning and every team that faces Tommy White as much as they hate to face him love to do so when he leads off an inning at worst he can only score one run he was trying to do that uh, 
home run cut on that mighty swing to start the sixth. That was, yeah. 94 up in the zone, and Zabel gets away with that one. Pat, I know White's not a big guy. You really see him kind of squat down. He skies another one in the air to right field towards Galloway. Galloway makes the catch one gone. Always find it a little bit unusual with his stance, how low he gets. Yeah. He does. It is a, an, an unorthodox stance. Kind of keeps himself, his body, his upper body straight up with those knees pointing down. He's able, able to retire. Boy, you've seen a lot of teams this weekend, Britt, start to pound that fastball inside on White. I know some people have been wondering who's going to protect him in that lineup. In other words, bat behind him so the teams yep. don't have to pitch around him. As Brady Neal gets that job today. But as uh, Jay Johnson said, I just want him batting in a position where there's guys on base in front of it, wherever that may be. Well, I think that was the uh, idea of dropping him down to that three hole Agreed. today. Yep. Just gives an opportunity for a couple of teammates to get on base and still get him up in that first inning. But this is a lineup a little bit like the Vandy team we saw in the previous game that's really going to go one through nine some contests and do a lot of damage and it never happens every single game. But uh, it's not like the college teams where you get through the middle of their lineup and you could kind of coast. Yeah. It. It's not the case. Nope. No easy. Uh, no easy outs in this lineup. We talked about Jared Jones batting in the seven hole today. He could probably bat clean up in a lot of <laughs> a lot of SEC lineups. Big swing from Neal and a foul ball right back to the netting. Two balls, two strikes. That one is shot fair down the line. Hits off the short fence. And ricochets out into left field, and Brady Neal will coast to second base with a double and his second hit of the game. Yeah, that's a great piece of hitting from, from Brady Neal. The ball was down and away, kind of trying to back door from Zabel. And a great job of staying back and driving it the other way. It's a good job letting that ball get deep. The question was, was it going to stay fair? And it sure did. Sliced it right into that corner. Tigers probably wouldn't mind a few more runs. Hayden Travinsky drove in a run with a fielder's choice back in the fourth, officially 0 for 3, also a couple of Ks. Pitch came in around his hands. LSU would. Move to 11 and 1 if they can get this win today after a 3 and 0 weekend. We saw them a couple of years ago here in 22. Huge alumni base, of course, in Houston for the Tigers. But as Jay Johnson mentioned, I believe he said they had three players from their recruiting class that were here watching his team play in 2022. So, you know, you get a lot of these Houston kids, you encourage them to come oh, here. Yeah. And, you know, it's a big event. Something to. Uh, Dangle out in front of them. That's right. And LSU does get their fair share of Texas players. It's a catcher up in the suburbs named uh, Cade Arambidi, who put on just a freakishly impressive show, the Perfect Game National Showcase this year. We're talking about <laughs> arm strength of 100 from the outfield and behind oh, the plate. And yeah, it was it was some. That ball hit in the air, down the line and left. Towards the Crawford boxes, hits off the base of the fence. A little bit of topspin there from Travinsky. He will chase on Neal. That's the seventh LSU run. Back to back doubles by the Tigers. I did even make the outfield fence, but uh, kind of short off the wall or hit the very base of the fence and left. Yeah, I think it just got in on the hands a little bit of uh, Travinsky. Not able to quite get the barrel to it, but. And as he's strong, just muscles that ball out to that left field wall. It's going to be a visit from Steve Trout. Could be it for Zabel. Zabel done a pretty good job up until 
Dylan Travinsky. Only really giving up the one hit, struck out four. Pretty good command of three pitches. He had given the Bobcats what they needed until these last two doubles. And this is Chad Massengill, the pitching coach. This may not be a pitching change. We'll be buying some time here. Bullpen is up and going for Texas State, but his ables look pretty sharp, and I think they're going to leave him in, and they are. He's had pretty good stuff. Tigers get one of those three runs back that they gave up in the fifth. Extended to a four run lead. And this is Milam. Single and a walk and a line out. Big breaking ball falls in at the knees for strike one. Fly out to right before back to back doubles. It made this a four run LSU advantage. And that pitch carries off the corner. Las Cruces, New Mexico native, Stephen Milam. Rips one to right. This ball's down. It's going to go all the way to the fence. Travinsky will score. Milam will stop at second base. That's three straight doubles, tacking on two more LSU runs. This is a great swing from Milam, and this one laced into right field. Tigers doing a good job of really staying back on these breaking balls and. Letting them get deep, not getting too out far out front, and Island barrels that pitch up. Eighth run on the board for the Tigers. Yeah, this is the danger I think facing LSU. As Jared Jones bats, one for two with a walk. At times you can feel like you do a decent job against them. They've hit one home run today, a solo shot. They had the one five run inning but you look up and they still have eight runs on 14 hits in the sixth inning. Yeah. you feel like at times they haven't exactly blistered you around the yard and yet they're still doing their fair share of damage. Well they had the five hits back in the fourth they did leave the bases loaded after they scored five runs but you're right but it could have been a lot worse they have left quite a few runners in scoring position and without the scorecard it's Eight runners left on base, so it's yeah, it's a score that could be a lot worse. They have piled up the hits. That's what was so amazing about the Vandy comeback in game one. Again, down to 11 3, 11 unanswered runs to win 14 to 11. They had 15 hits. They only left five guys on base all yeah. game. Really efficient. Moving runners and scoring them. Right now is able just trying to pick up a couple of outs find a way through this sixth. High fly medium depth right field off the bat of Jones Galloway's caught one of those up in the rafters this inning there's another Milam's going to third base that throw was not that far off of being a potential out at third a little bit offline. Yeah a strong arm from Rashawn Galloway of course came into the program as a catcher. If uh, found a place in the outfield for him when he's not catching or DHing and. A lot of potential but yeah really strong arm just just off. Up the line a bit. But Milo moves over to third. Two gone for Jake Brown. Single and a double. Two of the 14 hits for LSU. This was scoreless into the third inning. That one fouled down the line and left. And 
I mentioned Pearson had that homer in the third, then that five run fourth inning, and now two more for LSU in the sixth. Sable working from the windup. How about a two out bunt? Rolled foul off the bat of Brown. Yeah, it looked like uh, the pitcher, Sable, may have done something to his leg or his ankle. Oh, no. Yeah. Jake Brown showed bunt. Looked like he was trying to jump off the mound. And I think he caught a cleat or just maybe rolled that ankle? Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, he slipped, but uh, not sure if he pulled a muscle or he rolled his ankle in the process. Let's take another look. You see the bunt attempt and then watch Zabel maybe make that subtle move or that quick Ooh. move. Sniper got yeah. him. You really feel bad when you uh, realize that's going to be a foul ball because he was in a hurry to get down that line and obviously wanted to end the inning and not give up a bunt hit and whatnot. Yeah. When I jammed that uh, that heel. Looks like he kind of caught that cleat. He's trying to make that quick move to third base. It doesn't look like he's going to be able to go, but he's trying to talk himself into staying in this game. Yeah. Look him at least a, one or two tosses to see if uh, he can't recover. Yeah. Problem is, it's his push leg. Yeah, he looks a little wobbly to begin with. Yeah. This first pitch will tell us everything we need to know. That didn't look bad. No, nope, I think he's going to find a way. That first one was a, another wobble. That was probably going to be it. Looks good to me. All right, play on, says Pat. I think Steve Strout said the same thing. Let's go. Jake Brown trying to take advantage of Aaron Lugo playing way back behind the bag at third base. And this might be a good way to collect our ninth run if I can just lay a bunt down. Now with two strikes, that's off the table. Wouldn't you know it? Now he has to go cover. <laughs> has to field and flip. <laughs> and he gets the out. If he had to take another couple of steps, that would have been Murphy's Law right there. Yep. Ball will find you. He might not make it to the dugout. Now a five run game. Hey, we've got some spring training baseball coming your way on the network Tuesday and Wednesday Marlins and Mets the 1130 a.m. first pitches and the Nationals Tigers and Phillies for the next week. March is madness in basketball but it's also a little bit crazy when it comes to spring training games getting ready to work towards opening day. So we got to put those guys to work. I'm glad we got them into some college games with Blummer and TK but now they need to get back to their day jobs. 
Is there a rule that we have to have a conversation with a pitcher and the umpires before every half inning about something? <laughs> Well, I think they're checking uh, Christian Little's glove. I mean, first it, someone's uh, got a bad foot, then yeah. we got a glove, and then we need to see if he's okay, and then somebody's celebrating too much. And is the glove dark right. enough? Yeah, Anyhow, here we go. Seventh inning. Does it yeah. pass the cuddle rule? <laughs> Was it too white? Was it too chalky? Yeah, we saw a glove tossed out last weekend, and it was against uh, Tennessee, and. Tony Vitello was none too happy about it. I, I think, think there had to be some clarification around the color of the glove okay. rule. Yeah. All right. Wave and a miss by Collier. Tony V wasn't happy, you say? I know. Shocker. <laughs> he's one of my favorites, though. I will say, I, I really enjoy talking baseball with Vitello. Oh, he's tremendous, man. You know, when they say teams take on the personality of their manager, head coach, that's true. That is Tennessee. Yeah. It is a passionate group. Spirited. Speaking of passion and spirit, Bobcats need some of that. Get things going. Yeah, there you go. Collier singles to center to begin the seventh inning. Nice afternoon for Ian Collier. A couple of hits. You know, sometimes they will say as Jay Johnson makes the walk out to the mound that early in the year pitching is ahead of hitting. I will say this weekend this event it feels like these hitters have just handed it to the pitchers they over have, and over. Yeah more than even it out. They have had the upper hand in some of these games. Well the glove gets to stay in but I don't know if Christian Little is going to stay in. Well that'd be something if he just left the glove because it works but he has to leave. That's going to be it. Johnston singles to the bullpen and he makes the move. LSU about to bring on their third pitcher of the game. We'll step aside, come back with more right after this. Third pitcher for the Tigers today is left-hander Javen Coleman. Yeah, good numbers from Javen Coleman. 2-0 record, 2.57 earned run average, seven innings pitched. Walk three, struck out nine. Coleman, the lefty, stands 6-2 from Richmond, Texas. He was a homeschooler. From our neck of the woods. Yeah. I believe that uh, LSU has used 19 pitchers so far in this season. 19 different arms. Almost feels like a spring training clubhouse worth <laughs> of pitchers. It sure does. The open tryouts. It is a deep bullpen. Coleman was drafted in the 16th round by the Dodgers this past year. Had his Tommy John in March of 22. This is Farber. He's going to wave and miss. In a low 90s fastball. Pretty good run with it.
Leadoff single by Collier this inning. Farber looking for a second hit, but this one's going to hang up long enough for Brown to make the catch. Nice shot by Farber right at Jake Brown. It'll take about two or three steps in. Alec Patino doubled and scored back in that three run Texas State fifth inning and it really for a couple of innings kind of changed the complexion of this game because LSU led six nothing through four and Texas State took advantage of an infield single and throwing air and dribbler to uh, play three runs all with two outs and then LSU responded with two of their own in the bottom of the sixth. One on one out in the Texas State seventh inning. Coleman's next pitch. Hit straight up the side. Of it. And I mean straight up there. Who wants it? This is going to fall. How about wow. that? The pitcher Coleman <laughs> looked at his catcher, Travinsky. Why did give it up on the baseball? And then somehow Coleman made the catch. He wasn't calling that pass. No. He was the last man standing. Now that's a the, the pitcher has to turn around and call who's going to take it. And uh, he was just as confused as everybody else. Who's going to take this ball? Nobody was yelling for it. Travinsky would be a tough, tougher catch for the catcher to turn around and try to come backwards towards it. It uh, more than likely would have been Jared Jones, the first baseman. That might have been his ball, but great job by Coleman to recover and catch it. Chase Moore skies one towards the left field. This is a long run for Pearson. He gets there to make the play and a leadoff single, and then. Three straight retired by Coleman. Well done, young man. Stretch time at Minimade. Five run LSU Tiger advantage. I think everybody is sufficiently stretched out, especially <laughs> those that have been here for a couple of games. They've done this drill twice. One more game to go tonight. It'll be the Houston Cougars and Ragin Cajuns from Louisiana. Huge crowds this weekend and some good baseball, offensive baseball. Cameron Bush, meanwhile, comes on to pitch here at the bottom of the seventh to face these Tigers. Yeah, Cameron Bush, the 6-2 senior from Round Rock High School four year letter winner at Texas State see the numbers on the year a couple of innings given up one hit one run a couple of strikeouts he is a veteran out of that pen and a solid arm for Texas State just one of those dependable Guys knows how to pitch, not overpowering stuff, but understands how to use it.
Here's Michael Braswell, 9 1 and 2 for the LSU Tigers in the bottom of the seventh. Eight runs on 14 hits for LSU. What a weekend in college baseball, completing week three before we inch a little bit closer to the conference. And, uh, of course, Texas jumps in earlier than others. LSU will have another weekend of non con opponents hosting Xavier before they go to Mississippi State on the 15th week from next Friday there's a ground ball to third at Lugo his throw across retires Braswell and there's one out every team in the SEC is going to have two regular opponents so for LSU those will be Texas A&M and Mississippi State that means Old Miss and LSU which has been a great rivalry yeah and in the last decade Arkansas and LSU has been probably the best two teams not named Vanderbilt in the conference they're not going to be it on a regular basis. Yeah so you're an SEC guy so what what went into to creating those natural rivalries we're going to have those, the two teams you always face every year. Well it's tough I mean there's a couple of obvious ones you know you can throw Texas and Texas A&M or Old Miss and Mississippi State but it feels like a lot of these schools have more than two rivals. There's a chopper by Kling to short and the throw will retire him hustling up the line and there's two outs. And I think there's a little bit of frustration because for Ole Miss I think they enjoy playing LSU more than they probably enjoy playing Mississippi State. I would think so. And uh, you know yeah. Arkansas it's not a season if they haven't played LSU. Right. So there's going to be a I think the next two years Arkansas and LSU still play right. But then after that it's correct because yeah. these coaches now have their schedules for almost the next decade and a half. I think 13 years. Out, yeah 13. Which is strange. That's what I heard. As Pearson takes strike one. Yeah. So I'm wondering Pat we have seen this event before be kind of a Big 12 SEC tournament where there's three SEC teams and there's three Big 12 teams and of course the SEC teams all play the Big 12 you never play a team from your right. own conference. I'm wondering if maybe there could be a situation where you might have say in Arkansas and at LSU and have them meet once here because they're not going to meet in the regular season. Right. Well, that sure would be exciting for the fan base. I mean. And you know the fans from Arkansas and LSU would turn out to Houston in a heartbeat. And I'm using that as an example. It could be Texas and LSU for that matter. If they're not on a regular rotation and they're yep. not playing then why not throw them into a one game scenario. You might see them in Hoover. You might not. You might never see him. Right. The whole season. Pearson will chop one towards third. This is a long run for Lugo throwing on the run not quite fast enough. He did everything he could. But Pearson beats it. Gets the infield single. That's his third hit of the game. And the Bobcats had the shift on the infield and had Lugo pulled over towards the shortstop position. Just a high chopper. And that Pearson's speed is undoubtedly good out of the box. Easily beats that. Tommy White fouls one back into the upper tank. Tommy tanks to the upper tank. <laughs> All right. He's a kind of hitter. You get him out once and you go, well, now he's due. Got him to chase that high pitch. Yep. Fastball under his hands. Goes into that squat in that batter's box. Hands over the inside corner of the plate. <laughs> Lifting the ball high in the air. Deep center field. Farber turning and running. Now moving to his left. Into a dive and it. somehow he caught it. <laughs> what a route by Farber. White can't believe it. <laughs> that was not the most direct path no. to the baseball. But you love the moxie from the freshman. No doubt. The former <laughs> infielder, Ryan Farber, closes the gap, makes the catch, retires Tommy White.
While we were in break, they actually reviewed that catch by Farber and center on the uh, deep fly from Tommy White. No surprise they upheld it, but this was yeah. <laughs> quite a route by Farber. I mean, he has to turn and make a left turn here. And keep in mind, it's indoors today. No win. Yeah, outstanding catch by Farber. And, of course, a converted infielder. He has not been playing center field very long. And... You said it, Brett. Not the most direct route to it, but nonetheless <laughs> effective. Makes the out. Retires the Tigers. That would have been a run. He saves a run. Had uh, Ian. Well, you had uh, Josh Pearson. That's right. Yeah, we would have scored easily from first base. And you mentioned he's a shortstop playing center field for now. And he tried to steal third base late in the game yesterday and was thrown out. And at the time, I know it was part of our conversation. It was in the eighth inning and felt like it might have taken Texas State away from scoring a run and and then the Longhorns took a lead in the bottom of the eighth and, and coach said after the game coach Trout and he mentioned it to us in the interview that Farber came over and apologized to him and he said listen I, it's an era of aggression yeah. I'm not going to I'm not going to try and push you or I'm going to hold you back every once in a while but uh, didn't find any fault with the kid and I'll tell you what those youngsters they play with some energy us old men we just sit back and marvel at the uh, <laughs> At the speed of some of these guys, the way they play the game offensively, defensively, yeah. running the bases. It is fun to watch. Yeah, and I think the, uh, the situation was not a good situation to run in. And so, you know, Farber will learn from that. And like uh, his head coach, Steve Trout, said, hey, I'll, I'll take an aggressive play mistake. You know, and I'll, uh, th they'll learn from that. We'll talk to them about it. They'll, they'll know what to do ne next time. Tommy White's no longer in the game. Ben Nippolt is at third base. Not sure if that's just getting him in there or whether maybe something happened on that uh, trot towards second base. Anyhow, Ramirez is going to lead off the eighth inning. There he is. There's Nippolt. St. Paul, Minnesota native. Ramirez skies one to center. This is to Kling. Who wants it? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was Kling. Yeah. Brown was there just in case. Lending some moral support. There were probably days in the remote broadcast era where this would cause somebody some confusion, right? Oh, you You'd love this, though, right? <laughs> Just having some fun. <laughs> having some fun out there. <laughs> Remember Adrian Beltre used to do that all, almost on a, on a daily basis. Used to mess with his uh, shortstop <laughs> Elvis Andrus. <laughs> hey, speaking of the Rangers, you know I'm an Iowa guy, and I think everybody's mesmerized by, by Caitlin Clark and what she's done from a basketball standpoint. We may never see anybody quite that fascinating or drawn as many fans. It's pain you bats. My social media feed was ablaze about an hour ago because there was somebody that looked like it was Nolan Ryan in Iowa City watching women's basketball. Yeah. And lo and behold, it was Nolan it Ryan. It was Nolan. <laughs> in Iowa City, confirmed by wow. his son. So yeah. he was there in the heartland watching some women's basketball in a March Sunday afternoon. Now you got to ask if there's any connection to the family or what, what was he there for? Well, I'm assuming when you're Nolan Ryan, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> you can go to whatever game you would like. The one he wanted to go to, I guess, was Iowa women's basketball, Incredible. which means we're just in a completely different era than we were not that long ago with the proliferation of different sports and what television has done to uh, really kind of lend some amplitude to some great individuals. We're on our eighth of nine telecasts here at Minute Maid this weekend, and after Pena walked, Galloway will bat. He's 0 for 3.
right back into the strike zone after walking Pena. We've seen these uh, Bobcat comebacks. You open the door and they typically will walk through it. Yeah, I think the message for all of these teams this weekend, whether you've been up four or five runs or six or eight or down by that same number. The importance of continuing to play hard and just trying to see if you can find a way to come back or of course on the other side hold a lead. Yeah. Well that's been it with this uh, Texas State team for sure. We saw it this morning with Vanderbilt. And nobody is uh, mailing these games in even if you're down six seven eight runs. Fans didn't care for that last pitch call that one down in the dirt. Two balls two strikes. Well reason to uh, be upset according to MLB pitch tracker that ball was above the zone. All of, sudden, four. Yeah. All of a sudden Javen Coleman's having trouble with the zone. Three two. That's strike three. A little bit of a delayed call, but Galloway rung up. Yeah, a couple of tough pitches on Rashawn Galloway and disagreed with that one as well. Take another look at it. Did he catch the inside mm. corner? I don't know. Trubinsky did a good job of holding it steady. Might have bought the strike for his pitcher there. May have. Lugo's hit the ball hard three times today. Hacking at the first pitch. That one's way up there. Into the rafters, out into shallow center, and the catch will be made. Two and the eighth. So a walk, but no damage done by the Bobcats. Shortening this game. It remains an 8 3 LSU lead. Winding down day three. One more game to go after the completion of this one. Houston and Louisiana will be the nightcap. The Cougars and the Raging Cajuns. Cougars trying to get a win. And Louisiana had that 7 4 loss to Vandy. We televised. And last night had to play LSU. Tight game throughout. 5 4 final. LSU getting the win. New pitcher for the Bobcats. Tony Roby comes on to work in the bottom of the eighth inning. Yeah, the senior right hander stands 6 5. A pretty good season last year. Appeared in 20 games, started 12. Out of the bullpen today for the Bobcats, making his second appearance. 
This will be his first relief appearance of the year. He's pitched six and a third innings, given up nine hits. Has walked five, struck out nine. So will be called upon to keep this eight to three lead right where it is. Four, five, and six to up for the Tigers. Brady Neal will step in with three infielders on the right side of the diamond and take strike one. So oftentimes, and that ball hit through the shift out into right center for a base hit by Brady Neal, his third hit of the game. College baseball started to mirror Major League Baseball in some aspects. Of course, the big one is the bats, but you know, the pitch timers were comparable when the rules changes came through. But I'm wondering if we're going to see something with the shifts at some point in college baseball, considering they don't want those in the big leagues. They don't yeah. want them in the minor leagues. Could see it. And uh, typically the kind of the rule changes start to kind of bleed down That's into right. different systems. And so, yeah, wouldn't doubt it. Hayden Travinsky will check his swing. That ball kicked away just a bit. The throw to second base might still be in time, and it is. Neil got a little bit daring and tried to advance. Collier bounced a one hopper there, but it was on the money once it skipped to the shortstop Powell. Yeah, Neil couldn't believe it. He thought that ball had really gotten away from Collier. And Collier, nice job of knocking it down and making a strong throw to second base. It just kind of popped off the top of his mitt a couple of steps away. Well, that yeah, was Neil the hesitated. Yeah. Yep. yeah, he hesitated. He is out. Nice talk by tag by Mora. So Travinsky batting with the bases empty. It's a double and a couple of RBIs today. I could see where the coaches in college baseball would not want to limit the pickoffs only because I think you're going to run more at the college game than you are in the major leagues. Yeah. I'd Although I don't think that. an unlimited number of pickoffs works either but I don't know what you do about it but I, I do think we might see a change sometime in the shifting. I would agree with that. Now these umpires have more than ever on their plates to to try and legislate. They're worried about you know props on the field and guys on the grass and the last thing you want to have to do is now put another stipulation in on which side of second base are you standing yeah. and do you have two infielders and whatnot. I just don't know if if uh, you want the games to be that dissimilar considering how fast some of these guys are moving from the college ranks through the minors to the majors. Travinsky off the end of his bat sends one down the line and left it'll drop in and roll to the fence. Boy LSU has had a few of those doubles off the hands off the end of the bats yeah. and just putting them in play and getting extra bases. We have uh, done that often. This is the second time Travinsky's hit one off the end of his bat and dumped into the left field. Back to back doubles and two at bats for him. Ball oh, rattles around down by the scoreboard in the Crawford boxes and. How big is that throw at a Neil now? He would at least be at third base if not right. scored on that play. Pinch runner. Zeb Ruddle. From Monroe, Louisiana is going to run. Little chopper foul wide to first off the bat of Milam. Means we'll see a new catcher for LSU in the ninth. They've got a few. Four to choose from. I guess the question is for uh, Coach Johnson and his staff once you get to the league play when you've got a roster of what, 27? You know, what are you going to do then? I mean, yeah. you, you're not going to have an unlimited number. You're going to have to leave somebody off for these weekends. Liner to right again off the bat of Milam. This will chase home Travinsky with the ninth LSU run. Milam never stopped. He might be out at second, but the throw's high, and he is safe. Bobcats threw behind Milam, and he just kept running. And a high throw from Patino down to second. Allowed him to be safe. Yeah, Galloway had no shot at uh, Ruddle coming from third base. Is to try to go home. Well, that's cut off there by Patino at first baseman. The throw from him over to Powell was was high, and Milam slides in under the tag. Another runner in scoring position for the Tigers as they bump the lead now to six. That'll be a single, advancing to second on that uh, throw, 
And Jared Jones will bat. Just one home run in this game. We saw the homers in our last two broadcasts with the 14 11 Vandy win over Texas and the 11 10 Texas State win over the Longhorns. But Pearson had that solo shot in the third. That's it as far as the long balls. Yeah, but 18 yeah, hits 18. for the Tigers <laughs> and nine for the Bobcats. They've not been shorted in that category with 18 hits. That's right. 0 2 pitches high to Jones. Well, three straight off of Tony Roby to start the eighth. Bobcats do have the run of the board on the throw out of Neal at second base. Pitch started to flutter a little bit high, two and two. I think if you're Jay Johnson and the LSU Tigers, got to feel obviously feel happy about potentially going three and zero in this tournament. A lot of great competition, but. He's seen a lot of good things this weekend. A couple of close games for them, back to back nights. Big wave of the miss. So Jones will K for the second out of the inning. So if you dial it down, you think the pitching and the bullpen especially won you a couple of games in the front end of this tournament. And now the offense takes over for game three. You just keep winning games in different ways, I guess. That's right. Ashton Larson is going to pinch it. Overland Park, Kansas native. Hitting for Brown, who had two hits at four at bats. This is kind of an art form as well for these coaches late in these games. When do you throw a guy in there to get him in at bat? It's not easy. To go a couple of weeks and not play. So when yeah. can you get an at bat for somebody? What does the game situation allow or dictate? You almost are forced to now with the uh, error of the portal. And if you don't get these guys some playing time, there's just a lot of frustration built up over the course of the year. Even if you're winning, every player wants to play. Being patient, waiting your turn, developing, gosh, such a big part of college baseball. And some of the great coaches and managers that I've observed in the last 20 years know exactly when to rest a starter and to throw one of their bench guys in there for a start, get him a couple of the mats. Larson will shoot one into center for a base hit, so he's going to get a single and RBI. It's now a 10 3 LSU lead, so the pinch hitter drives in another LSU run. And that's what you have to do. It's it's really tough when you don't see a, a live pitch baseball in a, a week or two weeks when you're waiting your turn. But then you get the opportunity and Ashton Larson takes advantage of it. That's how you earn yourself more at bats. That's pretty impressive. And I think you've seen it probably a lot more than I have through the years. But you know you rest that veteran who might be just a little bit tired or a little bit off. Somebody steps forward, gives you a good performance, then you throw that starter back in, and he's rejuvenated, refreshed, and you can really keep that thing kicking down the tracks. Yeah, no doubt. Be right back.
It's a feet on the seat in front of you type of inning right now because LSU has extended this lead to 10 to 3 and Texas State forced to go to the bullpen one more time and bring on pitcher number seven here this afternoon Dalton Buckingham. Yeah if you're an LSU fan you've got your feet uh, up on the seat you feel pretty relaxed. And you're facing Dalton Buckingham with a couple of outs in the bottom of the eighth inning making his fourth appearance. A couple of strikeouts in two and a third innings only given up the one hit. Yet to be scored upon. Lake Travis High School product. Ten runs on 19 hits for the Tigers. Three runs, nine hits for Texas State. Even if LSU finishes off this win, it'll be I think a good weekend for the Bobcats. They would finish two and one. LSU, like Vanderbilt, would be three and zero. Oh. Haven't heard the official attendance numbers today, but we entered play about 7,300 fans short of an all-time college classic record. You think of the huge crowds on Friday night for Texas and LSU and the big crowd last night again for LSU and Louisiana. We'll find out about mid game at our nightcap what it looks like today. Well if they don't break it, it's going to be really close. Yeah, I think we yeah. need to fudge those numbers. If not <laughs> we need to get to that number because it has felt like we have had some massive crowds here this weekend. Well, the nightcap is going to feature Houston in the Raging Cajuns from Louisiana. Brian Kucherak is pinch hitting now for LSU. So just talking about getting guys an opportunity to bat. Late in this game Kucherak out of Chandler Arizona takes a strike. It's nothing in two. LSU has had three multi run innings. The five run fourth was the big one but two more runs in the sixth. They played a two here in the eighth. Yeah, the 19 hits is impressive. He thinks they might have a few more games like this at some point. I don't know when it could be the next game who knows but. Uh, just the depth of talent in this lineup. And, and that no, man's still trying to figure out all the pieces. No rebuilding for LSU. You know how to replace Dylan Cruz, Trey Morgan, Jordan Thompson, Gavin Dugas, Braden Jobert. Yeah, you start reading through that list. It wasn't just Cruz and Schemes. Yeah. It was a, a lot of players. Number of huge players, and all of them deserve their due, part of a national championship. Those fans will never forget you if you're part of that championship team. You had a big role. So a lot of new faces in the lineup, but they uh, picking up right where they left off. It's like they're going to run their record to 11 and 1 to start the season. And that loss came to Stony Brook on a Friday night at the box. Arkansas lost to James Madison. I think Old Miss lost to High Point. Mississippi State's lost to a lot of teams. Mix in a few of those L's. Wave it a miss. A strikeout to end the eighth inning. A couple of more runs on the board for the Tigers. Last chance upcoming for Texas State.
We go to the ninth. Last chance for the Bobcats down 10-3. We'll bring you back inside the broadcast booth. Brett Dole and Pat Combs. We've been doing this event together for at least 10 years, maybe yeah. longer. I know it's always my favorite part of the calendar. And usually it's me sneaking out for that last game. Now we'll let you get out and I'll come back for game number <laughs> nine. But your thoughts on what we've seen this weekend. Oh, man, an exciting weekend. You, you love to be here because it's such a great atmosphere at Minute Maid. The Astros Foundation has done a great job putting this tournament on. And, you know, no surprises where LSU has, has come in and competed well. Looks like they're going to be 3-0, Vanderbilt 3-0. But, man, the highlight for me of the weekend was the comeback victory for the Texas State Bobcats last night. I'll never forget Lugo blowing the bubble, hitting the home run. I mean, that's just legendary stuff. We'll never forget that, Brad. Yeah, indeed. Legendary stuff for Lugo and the Cats. This has been all LSU today, though. Ten runs on 19 hits. And one more chance for Texas State. Alex Gonzalez is going to bat for Powell. And Coleman right back out there. He's been pretty good through two quick innings. Yeah, great stuff from the Tiger lefty. Spotting it up pretty well, except for that pitch. But yeah, that uh, that home run last night, that's the stuff we'll tell our grandkids 10, 15 years from now. <laughs> we'll never forget this play. Yeah, making some memories. You just don't get that many opportunities for huge moments on big stages against big teams and then to take advantage and to do so in that manner. I mean in the era we live in with the social media aspect a moment can go viral quickly and when you have something unique and dramatic mix in a big bubble <laughs> along with the homer you could see where the fans would be interested in that a lot of fun. Out back and out of play off the bat of the pinch hitter Gonzalez. Yeah, I think every player that has come through this tournament will tell you baseball is a lot of fun. They they play it because it's, it, it's, it brings a lot of joy. But there's those uh, moments that get frozen in time that will never leave your memory. And that uh, ball last night from Aaron Lugo is one that uh, is emblazoned for sure for a lot of folks. He'll never forget it. Nope. That's that's for sure. I guarantee that. Three and two to Gonzalez. And Coleman will issue the walk. So he's been pretty good through two innings, but he puts on a free base runner to begin the ninth inning. And let's go back and look at Lugo's homer from last night in the ninth inning. See the bubble gum coming out and the baseball going out. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, no, no bigger moment for the Bobcats in that particular game. That was the uh, home run that won it. Look a little bit like Chris Burke's home run oh, in the goodness. playoff yeah. against the Atlanta Braves exactly in 2005. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew Tripp had to go out and close out the inning, which he did, but he just kind of sensed after the, the home run that they were going to complete that win over the Longhorns. And a pinch hitter. Samson Pugh from Montgomery, Texas. Handful of defensive changes as well for LSU after their pinch hitters. Texas State down to its final three outs. Cold strike at the knee. Bingham in left. Second baseman is Kucherak. Milo moves over to short. The new catcher as well as Malazzo. You're still scoring by now. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the scorebook is uh, yeah. it's really messed up. Time to give it up. We'll let you know what happens. Two two pitch cut on a missed two down on strikes first out here in the ninth inning. Well Javon Coleman doing a good job. For LSU. It's going two and a third now not giving up a hit. A couple of strikeouts two walks on the evening. I should some great stuff though.
Cameron Wheel is going to hit. For Farber. We'll really enjoy following the career of one Ryan Farber going forward. No doubt. His name is circled on a lot of people's lists to keep an eye on. Just like we did with Chase Mora a year ago. Watching Ryan Farber put forth big numbers in his very first season. Found right back to the screen. I'm really impressed with that. Freshman for War of the Tigers, Stephen Milam. Boy, has he been fantastic. Vanderbilt's freshman, a three hole hitter, Camden Kozel. Yep. I think he had eight hits this weekend. <laughs> it's hard to do. A couple of big time performances from these freshmen, and it's fun to watch. You break into, into a scene in a Power Five team and start going off. And, A lot of players have to wait their turn, but those guys are making a name for themselves early in their collegiate careers. Pitch spiked by Coleman. No advancement from Gonzalez. Didn't want to risk making it out at second base. Down seven in the ninth inning. Yeah, good decision. Especially with Malazzo's arm. Good stop by the new backstop for the Tigers, Alex Malazzo. So the count has gone full to Cameron Wyatt. Payoff pitch. Poked out into left. Bingham, the new left fielder, into the game. That's a sliding grab. He wasn't sure if he was going to slide or dive, and he kind of went in between. But lucky he didn't uh, catch a leg out there in the grass and yeah. go head over heels. No doubt. That was one of those in-between plays. You can see him trying to make that decision in real time. And he yeah, went from kind of pushing that head forward like he was going to dive to, no, I think I'll just slide on this one. Down on both knees and nicely done. You can laugh about it after you make that play. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Ethan Ferris out of Cypress, Texas, will pinch it now for Patino. Sidewoods High School product. Freshman getting an A-B here at Minute Maid. Credit to both of these coaches, Steve Trout and Jay Johnson, for trying to get a lot of guys in here in the last yeah. inning or so. A game that's outcome will not be altered, I don't believe, by anyone's participation. Good move by both these coaches. And there's a lot of these local players that grew up rooting for the Astros and coming to games at Minute Maid Park. Get a chance to get in that batter. Let's throw a couple of pitches here in this park. Are things you never forget. If you ne never play to the next level, you'll remember this one. You will. Bobcats down to their final out, but the count has gone three and zero to Ferris. And a four-pitch walk. Ethan Ferris can tell the grandkids how they worked around him in that ninth yeah, inning. That's right. They didn't want any part of him. <laughs> nope. Seven run lead was not safe. And I get Nate Yeski out of the mound or out of the dugout, headed towards the mound yet again for LSU. Well, Brett, always a joy to be here with you, man. This is uh, it's a highlight of my year. And I would agree. And uh, we just keep chugging away and keep coming back and. We've seen so many incredible teams and players over these uh, 10 plus years and credit to the Astros for keeping this event going and bringing in teams like LSU and outstanding mid majors like Texas State and along with Vanderbilt this year and Texas and on down the line we'll see Houston and Louisiana and can't wait for future years to come. Yeah. Really good stuff. Really good time and always great baseball here and love the fans of Houston they've supported this event for so many years and of course you get fans traveling in but a lot of local folks who just like to come out and see some baseball before the major league season gets cranked up. There we are. <laughs> you know, I think part of this event, though, 
is Space City, the home network, stepping up and always having these games televised. And then to have them streamed free at Astros.com. I know so many fans have commented how they appreciate that. They're yeah. not reaching into their wallet to pay. Yeah, I've got some great comments of the, the broadcast. And a lot of uh, friends and family have said, man, this broadcast and production was just spectacular this year. And it was like uh, they're watching a major league game. Watch on the social media channels, YouTube, whatnot. Whatever you're fancy. Chase Moore a batting with a couple of guys on after the conversation on the hill, but that's now six straight that have missed from Coleman. So he's getting this thing right to the finish line, and now he's in that position where he could just fall over the tape, but we aren't that's quite right. there yet. <laughs> I'm sure Net Yeski was saying, hey man, get a seven-run lead, just throw strikes. It's a struggle in front of the command right here. My goodness, seven yeah. in a row. He's trying to put forth three scoreless innings. I don't know if he'll get to that third inning if he walks more. Up. Uh, he's choking it now. Yeah, he's not close. Yeah. Three walks in this ninth inning. He's at 46 pitches. You know, when the velo drops like that, just tells you he's aiming it. Will they give him one more? Jay Johnson just signaled down to the bullpen and said, boys, we got a flight to catch. It may not even be one more batter. It may be one pitch or so in the course of this sequence if he doesn't throw a strike to August Ramirez. And Malazzo taking the slow walk out. That means he's buying some time. Trying to get through this inning without using another arm, but. Jay Johnson on the phone. Is he ready? Is he ready? <laughs> Let me know. All right, now we get Jay Johnson heading out. He will make the pitching change. Mm. Coleman was pretty good until the very end, and then just could not find the strike zone. Issues three walks. In the ninth, and that will do it for Coleman. So the Tigers will have to bring another pitcher into this game, up 10 3. Back right after this. Well, the Tigers forced to go to the bullpen. DJ Primo hopes to get that final out and finish off this game. Yeah, the freshman from Baton Rouge Central High School. 5'10", 195 pounder, making his fifth appearance. He's a couple of innings pitched this season, giving up three hits, a run, and a walk. At this point, Jay Johnson just saying, hey, just throw a couple of strikes here. We'll get out of this inning and Get on the road. I feel like he's been saying that for a, <laughs> a few batters this inning. So Primo is the fourth pitcher for LSU. And Texas State has used seven. And LSU trying to go to 3-0. Texas State would fall to 2-1 this weekend. 
Tigers just keep on rolling coming off that national championship last year. Last two SEC national champions finished last in the SEC the next season with Ole Miss and Mississippi State. I don't think you have to worry about that at all no. with uh, LSU. The Cougars out there in the uh, stands at right, wondering when their game may begin. August Ramirez, the batter. And Primo snaps one in there for strike one. Yeah, the third game originally slated to start at 7 o'clock, 7.05. That was going to be pushed back to at least 8. Drill to center. Base hit by Ramirez. Going to chase home a couple of runs and make this a 10-5 game. And those runs go on the tally of Coleman. Well, you never say never, not with this offense. You walk three guys in an inning, and there's a pretty good chance at least one's going to score. Yep. There's going to be another pitching change here for <laughs> Jay Johnson. <laughs> Playing matchup baseball here with a five run lead. I'm sure not his plan when he began this inning. I don't think it was anyone's plan. Yep. <laughs> All right. We'll be right back for more after this. Well, LSU entered this sitting needing to get three outs. <laughs> we have been here a while. They still need one more to go. <laughs> They're on their third pitcher of the inning, uh, Gavin Guidry entering the game. Yeah, I'm sure that uh, this thing did not start with Gavin Guidry's name on Jay Johnson's mind, but here he is. Guidry making his fifth appearance, does have a save. Three and two thirds innings, giving up three hits, a run, and six strikeouts with two walks. Gavin Guidry part of the back end of this really strong. LSU bullpen. Closer type stuff. There's our crew. They're hanging in there pretty well, don't you think, Pat? They're doing well, man. It's been a long weekend of baseball. We've had a couple of extra inning games. We've had some games with a lot of runs. It took three and a half, 345. And That's right. Let's continue to be the professionals that they are. Hanging tough. This is Pena. Couple of Bobcats still out there. And two have scored here in the ninth inning. 29 combined hits. That gives you an idea of yeah. what we've dealt with with base runners. If the Bobcats strand these two, we'd have 20 combined left on base. Gidge with the nasty slider. You saw that first pitch. This ball sits low 90s, but. Good command of that slider. That's usually his out pitch. Seeing all of our crew members. Well, at least the top of their hat. Yeah, they're not even breaking stride. <laughs> I like it. Bobcats down to their final strike or out in the ninth inning. LSU fans now will come to their feet. They sense it. 
trying to push this game over the finish line. Malazzo wanted one high and he got one up in the yeah. zone. Overthrew that slider just a tad. That's the loneliest spot out there in center. Tucked away in the little village. Two balls, two strikes. Ninth inning. That's a swing. I'll call it right here. Ball game over. <laughs> and the LSU Tigers win all three games this weekend. They defeat Texas State 10 to 5 on Sunday afternoon, now evening. Yeah, impressive fashion for the Tigers. They'll leave Houston 3 0. And a successful weekend for the Texas State Bobcats, even though they get on the losing end of this one. But uh, what a what a tournament, what a game. Brett, hate to leave you, but you got game three on your own here with uh, Bogusetic, right? Go catch your flight. <laughs> I'm going to go catch a flight. <laughs> I don't want you to miss your flight. Thank you, guys. Great weekend. <laughs> one more game to go coming up again. Houston Cougars and Louisiana Ragin' Cajuns from Minute Maid Park. But the LSU Tigers, they're now 11 and 1 with the victory. Texas State 7 and 4. So for Pat Holmes and our entire crew, I'm Brett Dolan saying so long for now. The Cougars and the Cajuns coming up in about an hour. Thanks for tuning in again today. Day three of the Astros Foundation College Classic from Minute Maid in downtown Houston, Texas.